to each and every one of you. Uh, for uh, being here this morning. Uh, the informational hearing by the Committee on Tourism, Municipal Affairs, Housing and uh, Historic Preservation is now called to order. It's about 8.01 in the morning. Uh, for the record and in accordance with 5 GCA Chapter 8, Subsection 8107, notices were sent out via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets on July 22nd, 2016, and that's adhering to the five-day notice. And the second notice was sent out on July 29th, uh, adhering to the 48-hour uh, notice. Um, with me here today, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Senator uh, Tony out of the Minority Leader for being here this morning. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to share, ladies and gentlemen, that this informational hearing will allow the community to discover uh, the work that each uh, nonprofit organization has accomplished with the pass-through appropriations from the Tourist Attraction Fund uh, provided to your uh, organization for your projects during this fiscal year. And I, I just want to say in the interest of time, each organization will be given uh, about 10 minutes <laughs> to tell us about their projects. And I say that, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is because uh, we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 20 nonprofits that receive pass-throughs, and I want to give them the opportunity to present to the community of Guam and to our colleagues uh, what they have done uh, with the TAF funding received. Uh, I ask that you uh, stick to the following uh, questions to guide your presentation, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it in this gist. Uh, one, what have you accomplished with the grant funding provided to you? Have you exhausted your funding? What are your goals in uh, the next uh, fiscal year? Do you have a plan for sustainability? Uh, will you require additional grant funding? Have you been making efforts to submit reporting requirements to the Guam Visitors Bureau? And those are the basic guidelines, uh, more or less the rules of engagement. And again, it's just to give an opportunity to the, uh, our colleagues, to the legislature, but more importantly to the people of Guam, why it's important that the grant funding uh, that you receive from the Tourism Attraction Fund is real vital and real important to the mission mandates helping out the community. So with that being said, I was told that I have a, li uh, a list and, and that I should at least allow, uh, based on the public hearing notice that was submitted, uh, I will go ahead and give the opportunity for the Micronesian Cruise Association with Mr. Jerry. Pa Taltaltana will come up first. Please go ahead and come on up. And then uh, there, we have a lot of seats. So if you have your, your uh, committee staff with you, your organizational staff, they're more than welcome to come to the table. Uh, I'll go ahead and also ask uh, Mr. Jerry Paris, put for foot, uh, my love. I'll go ahead and have you speak right after that. Is anybody from TEC here yet? Historic in Alahan? Or how's that? We'll go ahead and start with the two of you first, and hopefully the other uh, organizations will come. Manana Sijos, Ms. Linda, thank you. Okay. Manana uh, Sijos. Yeah. Go ahead and state your name for the record, what organization you're from. If you have anybody else you need to introduce, you may do so for the record, and then go ahead and read your testimony or pre okay. uh, present your testimony. Buenas um, tardes and half a day. I am Linda Taichino Regis, the Executive Director for Pa'atau Tautano. Uh, to my right is Victor Luhan. He is the Executive Director for PIPID, which is our sister organization that also offers assistance to cultural organizations on Guam um, with um, federal grants or procuring other kinds of, uh, any kind of, uh, even administrative assistance. I would first like to thank the Honorable Senator Tina Munoz Barnes and the committee and my good friend, Senator Tony Bloss, I mean, Tony Bloss, Tony Ada, I know it's in my mind, right? The Committee on Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Guam Preservation Trust for this opportunity to expound on how the efforts and the accomplishments 
of Pa'atautautano have benefited the community at large to include our steadfast commitment to continue to promote, preserve, and perpetuate the indigenous culture of the people of the Marianas. Pa'atautautano has been incorporated as a nonprofit entity since 2001 and is the umbrella organization for 10 local groups or GUMA on Guam, Saipan, Tinian, in the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas, two in the state of California, two in Japan, and a blossoming group in Washington State. The GUMA SIA, or groups we support, range in size from 50 to 60 members, of which we assist their capacity and sustainability by marketing their efforts to include showcasing their talents through various events, productions, and activities. We've successfully done so as an administrative body by developing programs and activities through governmental appropriations, local grants from government agencies, generous corporate sponsors, I mean partners, a wide variety of community-based organizations, ardent cultural advocates, and most successfully via federal grants from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services via the Administration for Native Americans. Equating to over $5 million and nearly $3 million in leveraged resources since our first award in 2003. I present to you today information derived from our initial request for funding, specifically the Tourist Attraction Fund appropriation that the Guam Legislature has graciously afforded Pa'atau Sultano and its members in the past nine years. I would be remiss not to recognize my father, the late speaker, Carlos Titano, for his role in inspiring us to continually expand and broaden our ability towards our mission. Also to include the late three-time speaker, Honorable Tony Umpinko, for his recognition and foresight towards the promotion of tomorrow culture in the tourism industry. Considering the allotted time, I will highlight a few projects that speak directly to the Tourist Attraction Fund's intent. As you have stated, Senator Barnes, and I quote, working in tandem our tourism goals to develop and diversify our tourism industry by expanding our cultural resources and promoting our heritage, unquote. The Sheraton Laguna Guam uh, Resort has been our home since 2010, performing two nights a week. In 2013, Paatau Sultana received a grant from ANA entitled Imanagahit Kuturan Chamorro, Authentic Chamorro Dance and Traditions Project. This project focused to correct the inaccurate practices and presentations of Chamorro traditions by practitioners and residents, particularly in the island's tourism industry, and to produce authentic cultural traditions of Chamorro dance, songs, and chants weaving that are practiced and promoted locally and abroad. The outcomes of this project have exceeded our expectations and federal requirements of sustainability. The past two years, PA exhibits Chamorro culture and traditions five nights a week through dance, chant, song, and weaving. The Sheraton Laguna um, Guam Resort is the only hotel that presents a holistic Chamorro cultural presentation as their premier dinner show entertainment. They've invested improvements within the hotel for the nightly entertainment, offering over 16,000 tourists last year the opportunity to experience our unique Chamorro culture. Our commitment towards the sustainability of this ANA grant includes in the employment of cultural practitioners and artisans. This project has exceeded this goal threefold by affording Chamorro cultural employment opportunities and is consistently growing at a rapid pace. Another unforeseen yet extremely beneficial outcome of this ANA grant is the partnership developed with the Guam Premier Outlet showcasing every Saturday throughout the year Chamorro cultural performances, weaving instruction, interaction with the tourists and the locals alike for nearly three years. Every month, a different group or guma showcase their Chamorro talents and skills from 2 to 3 p.m., a peak time for GPO, estimated by GPO's estimates, nearly 5,000 who traverse the mall at this time every Saturday all year long. This also affords Chamorro cultural employment opportunities for those artisans and practitioners. Most recently, on a seasonal basis, another blossoming partnership with Tumon Sands Plaza has come to fruition. Chamorro cultural presentations have been presented within the facility of the Tumon Sands Plaza and outside the expansive walkway for passing tourists and locals to see in the heart of the tourism district. Once again, developing Chamorro cultural employment opportunities and promoting our heritage. 
Another activity that works in tandem with the TAF tourism goals, expand our cultural resources, and promote our heritage is our participation with the Guam Visitors Bureau's local community branding campaign, the Hafadea Pledge, and ex enhancing its presentations with the Chamorro Cultural Blessings, the Bendishons, and performances to include various governmental or, uh, occasions and events. Many of us are now very familiar with the chant and song, Katinkulu, O Saina, and Hinatsanilati, being presented along with opening remarks and prayers for a variety of events. Through another ANA grant, Genini Kantan Zantinaitai, Tanat Met Gurifinu Chamorro, the Chamorro through chants, prayers, and songs project, Pa'atel Totano has produced a resource material approved by the Department of Education Chamorro Language Studies Curriculum Committee. The project transcribes over 70 Chamorro chants and songs which have never had formal musical accompaniment added to their lyrics. Additionally, we have produced a two disc CD compilation divided into secular and non-secular selections, also embracing our Catholic Chamorro heritage. This resource is an invaluable tool towards promoting our Chamorro legacy within the Guam school system and abroad. This is another project that Pa'a believes should be developed to continually collect and <coughs> musically transcribe more chants and songs. Legislative appropriation will assist with the sustainability of this project as another annual signature event as listed within our request. The annual signature event that you're most familiar with is the Denania Menago Chamorro Dance Competition and Festival started with Pa'atel Sotano's first grant to establish four festivals showcasing Chamorro culture. Its humble beginning started in Inalahan Gepago, developed over a time a partnership through Ken Kaur in the Reef Hotel, hosting there then outgrowing Mercy Heights and now a two-day event with several hundred participants and nearly 2,000 in local attendance at the University of Guam Calvo Fieldhouse. Pa'a's largest signature annual event will be celebrating 15 years. These are just a few of the focal events and activities that Pa'a and numerous fervent Chamorro cultural advocates, artisans, and practitioners implore to continue to develop and expand in order to amplify and extend the work that all of us, all segments of the government, all facets of the private sector, and the community at large have collectively constructed and fostered Pa humbly seeks your continued support needed to amplify the continuance of programs and activities that have proven beneficial for the island in countless ways. Thank you for your efforts towards the preservation, promotion, preservation, and perpetuation of the culture for the indigenous people of the Marianas, Sainamasi, Linda Titan Regis. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, Madam Chair, uh, I just want to Thank you for your presentation. It was really detailed, and thank you for sharing with the community all the projects that you guys continue to do and the, and, and the partnerships that you work with the hotel, uh, continuing to advocate and include and, and, and integrate the tourists that come here, not just with uh, right. the integration with the, the tourists, but also with the local community. Yeah. So that's really good. And then also working with... Uh, with the uh, GPO yes. and the malls that, ex uh, that that are here today. And that's a good sign for the community to know that even the private businesses are getting involved, yeah. stores, the malls are getting involved so that to showcase our culture. Um, one of the questions that I asked was the funding that was received uh, from uh, the TAF, from yes. GVB this year. Have you uh, received, received all, all that? No. So what are you pending? We're just pending, I guess it would be the last lot. The would that be the 15% reserve that they're yes. holding back? Yeah, it's part of the 15%, yes. And, and, and did they tell you that you would be afforded that? Um, yes. They didn't say exactly, because every year, since we've been around for a while, we know that in the last few years, there's always a percentage, 5 or 10% that's held back. So it really depends. So I were kind of expect that. I mean, it's not within their control. Okay. And so you've been asking, you have been submitting the invoices to yes. GBB. Yes, and we're and, current with all of our reports. And, okay, that's that's very good. Yes. That was the last question I was going to ask was 
the effort in submitting your, your reports and if you can submit also a copy uh, to I did. them. I did uh, submit the reports to this GVB and also to your office. Yes, thank yes. you so very much. So and you want this report to go to GVB too? No? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, just, just, just for recording purposes. Sure. So they understand uh, how in depth the, the, the mission mandate of what PA has been doing for the community and for the, the uh, promotion. Uh, that's also very important yes, that they have a recording of that. Yes, okay. Senator. Okay. So thank you so very okay. much. So just I appreciate it. it. Senator, do you have any questions? Do you have yeah. any questions? <laughs> have you thank you. And, and we do okay. know that um, uh, we have shared with all the nonprofits as, <laughs> as important and, and critical as the mandate is to, to helping support the efforts of us uh, and, 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 and the grants that you receive from the TAF. I know that funding is really tight. I've been working closely with okay. the oversight chair, and um, uh, we will try our very best to keep what is on hand here. And if there are going to be any major changes, we will definitely let you know. But oh, we so wanted not to really, make sure. Um, for sure, yeah. That, uh, uh, we no, are really not, trying yeah. to work with the. I thought you were going to say we're going to try to increase it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and we understand that, and and again, yeah, if you have a projection for the additional grant funding, please don't hesitate to give us a yes. copy. I did so in the uh, in my that. original uh, request to you, in which I have a copy of that here too. And if I you can submit, submit it for the record, for the I would record really here. really appreciate so it. So that's yes. my original my original request. Yeah. Inte uh, a request, yes, yes, definitely. Which was because much. Yeah, much, much, much higher. Yeah, thank you. Because we want to sustain. We've been around for such a long time, and there's, there's almost two I, decades. Right, yes. sustain the, the the programs and also the the outshoots. And I think I'd be remiss in saying that the the um, I don't know. This is added is on more than my ten minutes, right, Uncle Jerry? But it's the 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 secondary benefit of all of this has really been the the um, the benefit to the to our children, the benefit to the community. We have classes all over the island with, that we teach for free and just seeing the benefit of the, the, the kids because they're not on the streets or not, you know, they're doing something, they're proud. There were 500 that participated at, uh, during FESPAC, but besides that, there are things going on every day, every day going That's on. That's great. That is, that are including the kids and, and giving them a, an opportunity to do something else besides, it could be sports, but this is another one. And it's a, it's a, it has shown it's really it's really shown the development and we've been able to get them now there's you know requirements on school we've been able to get them through school through the AmeriCorps program they're teaching in the schools now instituted a program up there so it's a, that's a secondary benefit but it's a very heartfelt one for us too to know that we're doing good for the community you know but thank I you. still believe that the arts are our soul, heart and soul. So that's the <laughs> Thank you. Beginning. And if you Stop. can submit the original yeah. intent again to uh, Ms. Bernie, we would appreciate it. Okay. Sign them all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next on the agenda, I will have the, um, the Micronesian Cruise Association. Um, Mr. Jerry. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Senator uh, Tina Munia Barnes and Senator Ada. Uh, before I go on with my Uncle Jerry, uh, if I may, please, just if one minute, please. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to thank Mr. Paris for giving me the opportunity, and I'd be remiss if, if I don't at least note this for the community. Last night, um, yeah. we lost a great leader. Uh, former Lieutenant uh, Frank, Governor Frank Bloss had passed away peacefully uh, with family uh, surrounding him. And um, if we could just, because he was our former colleague, also if we could just stand and have a moment of silence just so that we uh, could remember him in our thoughts and our prayers and extend to the family our deepest condolences. Si Dios más seeds and sign them all. Siham to todos. Por favor, Uncle Jerry Consigia. Senator, you must have uh, read my mind. I actually had thought about starting off that way, but I'm not yeah. familiar with legislative protocol, so, so I didn't want to Jerry, presume. Thank so thank you for that, because Frank has been also a very dear friend of mine. And for those of you who are not familiar, Frank actually has been a pioneer uh, as your dad. Uh, with the Guam Visitors Bureau years ago. Um, 
Good morning again, uh, Senators. Uh, for the record, my name is Jerry Perez, and I'm the current president of the Micronesia Cruise Association. I had prepared written testimony with supporting documents uh, yesterday morning, and I was getting ready to finalize it when I suffered a network meltdown. And in, unfortunately, GTA can't get to me until after tomorrow afternoon. Uh, they must have a lot of problems. So I apologize for that. No I, I am here to offer at least uh, oral testimony and then to follow up with uh, those uh, documents if, if it pleases the committee. Um, before going on, however, I'd just like to also add my support, uh, an MCA support, to Pa'atatotano and what they do. Uh, because the cruise industry, as you know, go to different destinations um, primarily for the cultural experience and history that makes different destinations unique. And I would tell you that, <clears throat> that years ago when we started at the GVB to create uh, the idea of a Guam brand identity, the centerpiece of that identity is the culture and heritage that makes Guam a uniquely different destination. And uh, at the time, we were sharing with people that really uh, the brand of Guam ought to be a living brand. And so Paatai Tautano has been a change agent in that regard, has been very much a partner of the tourism industry in helping to bring to life um, that which is important in terms of articulating our culture and our heritage. So I would like to thank them for what they do and add my, my support. Thank you. Um, first of all, yes, we make our regular reports to GVB as required, and yes, we make our nonprofit filings with the Revenue and Taxation Department with publications uh, afforded. And yes, we would appreciate continued support uh, in the future uh, for our efforts. Um, the funding status under Public Law 3366 appropriates 50000 to the GVB for uh, support of the MCA. We have received to date $32,500 for the six-month period ending on June 30. Uh, we anticipate receiving the balance of this in future allotments, hopefully before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, as I said, I will give you uh, a lot more documents uh, on our activities, but I would just like to share a couple recent developments that I think would be uh, appropriate for this morning. Um, your committee's continuing support and the legislature's commitment to make good on its cruise industry initiative within the regional leadership of APIL have not gone unnoticed by members of MCA, not only on Guam, but as you know, MCA also is made up of uh, the different government uh, destinations in, in the five uh, political jurisdictions in Micronesia. And they do appreciate the seed money that we've been getting from Guam uh, with the legislature's uh, full support. Um, so the 50000 we receive uh, has enabled us to have a modest, if small, presence in a very, very large and growing cruise industry uh, the global market today of cruise uh, industry is about 24 million passengers strong, generating $120 billion in economic activity, 1 million jobs, and $40 billion in wages. Uh, the demand for cruising is everywhere with more and more lines deploying into the Asia Pacific area, and it would behoove us uh, to really start getting uh, involved and try to develop this industry, uh, uh, industry in Guam. Um, very recently, in collaboration with the Guam Visitors Bureau, MCA engaged the Pacific Asia Travel Association to field a uh, industry task force. This industry task force is made up of about four or five cruise industry and strategic marketing professionals who are members of PATA free of charge. The only thing we had to do was take care of their travel expenses uh, to Guam and their ground expenses. Uh, a lot of it has been provided in kind, but we still have out-of-pocket uh, cash to deal with. And so the bulk of uh, the funds that we got uh, has been spent on that. 
Um, and it's also been spent on um, a subscription to the Cruise Industry News, which is a widely read quarterly magazine that is read by the entire industry. It's also allowed us to participate uh, this past year at the annual um, Sea Trade uh, Convention, which is the place where all the movers and shakers of the cruise industry uh, can be uh, networked with. Uh, so, uh, Madam Chair, the market growth for this industry is at a very steep trajectory in the Asia Pacific region, and consumer demand for more diversified and unique itineraries is on the rise. With GVB's leadership and MCA support, we believe that our approach and strategic direction of home porting a vessel on Guam uh, has been validated by the PATA uh, task force study and that really the time for action is now. And in terms of next steps, uh, we anticipate holding a uh, stakeholders meeting right after the summer break where we begin to outline a time and action calendar and begin to allocate uh, responsibility on each of these action items. I should clarify, however, that MCA is a supporting um, body on this, and, and the real driver of this effort uh, would have to come from the Guam Visitors Bureau in collaboration with the Marianas Visitors Bureau, because the idea of home porting a ship on Guam is to start where there's critical mass, uh, both in terms of uh, attractions and in terms of support. And then as we develop this uh, industry, expand to the outer islands. But um, the idea of having a home ported vessel on Guam is very important economically because of the entire uh, value chain of services that's associated with a home ported vessel that will bring us additional economic benefits. Um, so Madam Chair, we have come this far only because of your strong support and the legislature's support for developing this new and emerging industry. And on behalf of our members and the MCA board uh, in Micronesia, we thank you very much for your assistance and hopefully uh, look forward to your continued support. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Perez, and if I may, I truly appreciate your breakdown. Uh, I do want to say that it has been our vision uh, with uh, my vice chair, uh, Vice Speaker Cruz, uh, and the efforts of, of working closely with MCA to, to truly see the realization of a home ported ship. And we talked uh, about whether we'd have a small, mid size, or, or large vessel that would be home ported here. And being able to um, uh, have the opportunity to work with the uh, industry experts that literally did it for a labor of love. And our fee was to whatever MCA had was to make sure that, that, that they came over, that we at least paid for that. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, they came up right away with the report. Uh, they submitted a preliminary report in May to you folks and to Guam Visitors Bureau and to the uh, industry as a whole, which had more than 105 economies here on Guam this past May. I want to say thank you very much for facilitating that with Guam Visitors Bureau. But more important, uh, as we look at creating new jobs, new resources, and uh, just new adventure uh, for the ONTAP markets within this region, we want to say that if we don't get on board with this, Guam would be losing out a lot, and the Marianas. And I also want to thank you for noting the um, the MCA as its membership is with five other government jurisdictions within this region, uh, FSM, uh, 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 Saipan, and, and Guam, uh, all of FSM. So um, I want to say, and then including Pompeii and Palau, am I right? Palau and Marshalls as and well. And the Marshall Islands as mm -hmm. well. So yeah. I want to say thank you. We know that it's still critical. And again, reiterate the fact that we will try our very best to sustain the funding afforded to you today. Very much appreciated. And I would follow up with those uh, documents as soon as you can provide that back on. If you can uh, provide that, please, it would help the OMB committee. Yeah, you have any connections at GTA? Maybe we can hurry up, right? <laughs> De definitely, if anybody's hearing out there. No, they can't, get, they can't get to me at the earliest until tomorrow afternoon, maybe. Well, 
the listening audience knows, and anybody working at GTA will know that they, uh, they'll make that call to you, sir. Okay, but I'm sure you. they're doing their best, but uh, they must be overwhelmed. Thank you. Please, uh, and I would, uh, would anticipate the reporting as soon as, as, Certainly. as you can. Thanks. Thank you. Sina Mossy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next is TEC here yet? TEC, thank you so very much. Half a day. Oh, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. TEC. <laughs> As he's passing that out, I'd also call Historic and Alahan up to sit on the table with us and your folks. Take a next seat. I'll have Mr. And GIF, I mean, and Guam International Film Festival. If you're here, please have a seat on the table. Right there. Thank you so very much, sir. Yes, please. Just state your name for the record. Off the day, I'm John Kramer. I'm with the Tourism Education Council. Um, Hoffaday Senators, I presented a letter to you that's from our board of directors, our board chairperson, and our coordinator. So, but I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it to y'all. Um, Buenas, Jan Hoffaday, Senator Barnes, and committee men members. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you today and take stock of our of all of our many accomplishments. On behalf of our 13 me member board of directors, our 75 plus volunteers, including 30 coordinators throughout our Guam schools, we appreciate your long-standing support of our of our organization. The Guam Visitor in Industry Education Council, also known as Tourism Education Council, has been in existence for over 25 years and was started as a public-private partnership during Governor Adda's administration. And duty-free shoppers led by Bob Brusso as a way to educate your, our youth about the import and the importance of tourism. In those days, DFS teamed up with the executive branch and executed splashy media campaigns, I'm sure some of you will remember, and bust in many hundreds of school children to the tourism district. It's hard to believe, but back in 1988, most of, most of Tumon was visited only by tourists. Today, we know our families support the hotel industry just as much as our tourists do, and those children now bring their children to Sunday brunches, staycations, and those children, now adults, work in our hospitality industry. All of that started by the WAVE clubs. Welcome all visitors enthusiastic, also known as WAVE has gone far beyond those days of hotel tours. We teach our students what, what are the factors that make Guam a unique destination. After all, you can shop in many places, you can even go to nice beaches elsewhere, but where can you find our unique history, culture, language, environment, food, and most important, our people? Only on Guam. We know Guam is a beautiful place, but it's more than just our beauty that tourists are attracted to and we contribute to making it a more attractive destination by developing the quote-unquote software that is so critical to the industry and we know mature markets now value more interaction with local communities that's the wave clubs our board has changed charged us to not just to, not not to be not just a trash pickup group but an organization teaching our youth with what makes what makes Guam a unique destination we do this in many creative ways and have partnered with many community groups. Over the last 10 years, over 15,000 school kids have heard about the, co the coming Guam Museum, visited the T. Stell Newman Visitor Center, have walked along Aganya's historical paths, improved our environment by planting trees, and more recently teaching others about the detrimental effects of the rhino beetle. We have partnered with Guampedia on history projects and with DOE and UOG on education materials for our clubs. We have taught our students about the importance of giving back by volunteering for GVB promotional events such as the Cocoa Run, the Kids Cocoa Run, the Guam International Marathon, and the Micronesian Island Fair. Wave clubs have painted murals and welcomed visitors at our airport and hotels. This year we worked 
on the Cocoa Bird mural in Agania, which was painted during the Fest Pack. In 2015, our Rhino Beetle Wave Club activity was recognized by the National Make a Difference Day organization. For outreach, we partnered with Roland Kitika and his, and his staff to teach 300 of our club members about preventing the spread of rhino beetles. We, we were the only Guam program to be recognized from among the many submissions around the country. We are already working on our plans to make this, year, this year's Make a Difference Day even larger, which we are partnering with PDN, Green Endeavors, and Matson. In 2015, we started a community wave club at Santa Teresa, Teresita Church. We hope to expand this model to other youth groups. In 2016, we have planned new initiatives, including working with Farm to Table on a first ever kids only dinner, where we will partner with chefs and our local farmers to teach our youth about farming and sustainable food practices. We're developing a program with the Marine and Aquatic Division of the Department of Agriculture to learn more about protecting our marine life. Our clubs are eagerly awaiting the opening of the Guam Museum, Museum and have already begun working with Galati Group to plan tours. TEC and the Wave Clubs are a unique advocacy group that works effectively in our community. We use our resources wisely and we partner with many other organizations. Your funding helps us to continue our message and to reach more students and adults. In 2006, we had six, six schools participating with about 250 students. Today, we have 20 active schools and over 900 students. Of course, with the increased funding, we can take on new projects. We are not afraid of challenges. In fact, Senator, if you have other ideas that you would like us to develop, do not hesitate to let us know. I know you're not shy, so. <laughs> In closing, we want you to know that we have appreciated your presence at our annual Youth Summit over the last 10 years, and we look forward to your participation in the 2017 event. That's from Donna, Donna Kanata and Rowena Raffin. They, they wrote Thank the letter. I don't know, John, if you have the answer to this, but as I look at the Tourism Education uh, Council, um, you've to date received uh, out of the 30,000, 22,500, and there's still uh, pending 7,500. Um, by any chance, have, they, have, you been have you been turning your invoices into Guam Visitors Bureau? Yes, we've been turning everything into the GVB. They, yes. get a, they get a full financial report. Okay, great. And if you can just submit that to this August body, this committee, we would truly appreciate it. And I want to say thank you again. I know you're speaking on behalf of the chairperson and the other uh, members, but to see the project coming up for 2017 and the inclusions and the active participation of over 20 schools, we hope to get all uh, 36 schools well, in. We're in also more. starting to work with some uh, private schools Great. this year. That's one of our goals. Um, if I can say on my own, I've, worked, I've lived in Guam and Saipan over the last 25 years, and I also was on the TEC in Saipan, and it's a, it's, a great, it's a great organization for developing the kids' understanding of what tourism is all about and how it affects the island. So that's really that's both great. islands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Truly appreciate that. So if you can just make sure that the final the financial and, and comes to us and to, that, to GBB. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sign Thanks for your time. Historic in Alahan, Good morning, uh, Senator Tina uh, Barnes, Senator Ada. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the Administration of Historic in Foundation, we extend our sincere thanks Thank you very much for your support and our request for the cooperation of the fiscal 2017 budget of $25,000. Our government operation of 25000 from the Tourist Extraction Fund will help us continue with the fiscal rehabilitation of the huts, structures, and the daily operations of Gepago to more cultural village. We continually seek fundraising activities and donations for our showcase and educate our youth, which is the primary mission of Historic Land Foundation. The, the deteriorate conditions of the structures is this in this valuable cultural tourism destination is in very need of repair. Our organization is dedicated in preserving the historic site to benefit our heritage, education, and tourism related activities. Again, we would like to thank you for your support in this Foundation. The, 
we're still, you know, uh, I guess we're just struggling, uh, uh, Senator, uh, in our daily operations down there. Uh, we did uh, do some renovations on the states uh, for FESPAC, and I think we're still down to about three more huts that we need to uh, rebuild. Uh, uh, the gift shop is also in need. I think on the last storm that we had earlier, uh, we had some leakage, but then you know we didn't qualify, or none of us qualified on the uh, 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 for the FEMA uh, this year. So uh, twenty-five thousand dollars is we really appreciate it, but you know if we could uh, ask for supplemental, at least we could get the uh, the gift shop uh, repaired. Yeah, right now we're just covering it with tarps. Okay. Yeah. If you can uh, submit that plan to our committee, we'd appreciate it. And if you can just, for the record, state your name, uh, Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this and is uh, Mayor Jesse Pierce, and I also have my site manager, uh, Carlos. Senator uh, Tina Barnes and Tony here. Uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to be here to, uh, you know, uh, testify to, uh, for the stork in Allah. Uh, like, uh, my name is uh, Carlos M. Paulino. I'm a uh, temp I'm appointed recently as a site manager for Ed Stark in Alahe Foundation. Okay. Like the chairman uh, mentioned about, you know, this was happened back before the face pack. We we're able to repair three of the huts down there, but we, I'm looking at the, another three huts that I need to uh, rebuild. And we need funding, really. Uh, we're very critical with our financial ability down okay um, um, so you've historic in law and with the grant that was received this year have you gotten all of that uh, yeah, yes yes Senator. okay <laughs> and uh, and now has the uh, reporting uh, financial uh, statements been submitted to GVB yet mm, no I'll, I'll be submitting that this month okay, and before. could you make sure yes. that you provide us with a copy please it's really yes, important yes. and yes. GVB and, yes. and we thank you for continuing the mandate under mm -hmm. I know that there's some of the fac your facility that yes. needs major major renovations and I understand that you continue to work with the fundraising efforts too within the community and we ask yes. that you continue to work that and and um, we can we can also talk about maybe some offline projects, uh, maybe working with some of the uh, grant fundings that are out there that we can that we can work with um, outside of, of yeah. this. But uh, we will try to keep the funding intact uh, yeah, yes. that that you've received this year, yes, yes. and then uh, to continue the program moving forward. But just make sure yes, that you submit those documentations to yes, GBB yes. in our yes. office. Fair enough. Yes, sir. Yes, we will okay. submit. Okay. Senator Masi. Okay. Appreciate Masi it. Senator, do you have any questions for that? Senator Masi, Senator. How go masa? Si to sa dinig DC. Thank you. Half a day and si to Masi to the 33rd uh, Guam Legislature and to all the organizations uh, attending this hearing this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you to thank you to uh, Senator Barnes and Senator Ada for your presence. Uh, my name is Don Munia, and I'm here in support of the Guam International Film Festival as co-founder and executive director. <clears throat> in 2008, just eight years ago, my brother Kel Munia and I directed Guam's first uh, all-locally produced narrative feature film, Shiro Said. Uh, we used all local resources, mostly afforded by favors from close friends and family members. Uh, months after its release, the Guam film Shiro's had received international acclaim from film establishments in Las Vegas, Nevada, Strasbourg, France, Kyoto, Japan, Honolulu, Hawaii, with special recognition in Philadelphia Asian Film Festival, and we were nominated for Best Narrative Feature at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, all because of its originality and new cultural identity in international film. Uh, this one film afforded uh, my brother and I to make numerous film festival contacts in the United States as well as Asia Pacific. We gained insight into the industry of film and witnessed the social and economic impacts this one Guam production had on our island and how it promoted Guam and our culture to the world. Uh, after two years in development, the first annual Guam International Film Festival, also known as GIF or G-I-F-F, held its first ever event and received over a hundred films from 20 different countries like Japan, Singapore, the Marshall Islands, Germany, Israel, the Netherlands, 
uh, Australia, Russia, Korea, and China. Um, uh, up, up to this date, GIF has uh, seen almost a thousand film submissions from all over the world. Um, we proved its viability for two whole years before we transitioned into a nonprofit organization, 501c3. Shortly after GIF submitted uh, a, a formal request for its first tourist attraction fund uh, passed through appropriation in 2013. Since then, GIF has developed and implemented the first independent filmmaking production course curriculums for two colleges, the University of Guam Independent Filmmaking Course CO394 and Mass Media Course CO386, and for middle school students at the Guam Community College CACGP summer program. GIF has also developed the University of Guam Film Festival, which is the first university festival locally to showcase films from Guam and the Marianas Islands. GIF has also developed and implemented an independent film production program that produces films for itself to help generate supplemental funds with the intent to one day financially sustain the organization entirely. Um, we currently have one film produced under the production arm, GIF Independence, which is a documentary feature called Talent Town. We've recently screened this film at the 2016 Festival of the Pacific Arts in the Guam Museum. And uh, Talent Town is the first of many culturally and socially relevant documentaries to come. Um, we've also established partnerships with numerous local community development programs and organizations such as Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center's Prevention and Training Branch and the Non-Communicable Di Disease Alcohol and Tobacco Prevention Program, uh, Department of Youth Affairs Public Awareness and Adv Advocacy Programs, fil Films by Youth Inside Guam, or better known as FYI Guam Youth Empowerment Film Programs, and uh, Kel and I currently sit on the advisory board for the Guam Economic Development Authority's Guam Film Office and continue to work to develop the rules and regulations with the intent to establish a new industry for the island in the form of intellectual property, product export, and in addition to establish Guam as an international film production destination. Uh, we are currently in negotiations with the uh, Guam Museum uh, managing entity, Galaiti Group, to host this year's film festival event at our beautiful uh, museum here in the heart of uh, Agania. And uh, I believe that GIF has impacted many lives, and we've seen hundreds of uh, young adults and even, um, you know, some kids uh, uh, begin to create films and uh, perpetuate the culture through the medium of film. So it's really exciting for us. So um, we humbly ask for your continued support. And uh, we thank you so much for all of your support throughout the, th throughout the years. And, um, and that's it. Thank you very much. So it's Mr. Kell, would you like to add? Uh, half a day. Good morning. Um, my name is Kel Munya. I'm the co-founder of the Guam International Film Festival, as well as the program director and an adjunct instructor at the University of Guam. Um, if I can uh, speak freely, uh, I just want to add that uh, the opportunities uh, that you've helped afford uh, GIF have to expand into the educational realm uh, through the classes that I teach at the university, um, I'm, pl I'm proud to uh, say that since the last two semesters at the University of Guam, four of my students were able to become employed here on Guam through various media outlets. So they were able to take their skills and their knowledge from the classroom and uh, start to make a living through media within the structure of media that's already present. And with your continued support, um, that can be expanded upon um, through the medium of film um, with our region and through international as well. Senator, do you have any questions or comments? Um, thank you to the both of you, uh, Don and Kel. I, I just want to say that being able to see uh, this program uh, come to uh, its uh, reality and full fruition of making it successful for Guam and then still doing a lot of labor of love to give uh, and to work with the film industry uh, with Gita. I just want to say, I think more importantly, as you continue to grow and uh, 
teach at both at the community college and then engage with our community, our young adults, uh, to see the vision uh, and that they too can create. Uh, you've also mentioned uh, that you you started with 100 films and now a thousand films from around the world, and also looking at the local talent and making sure that the submissions are there. I, I just want to say that you truly see that vision. Um, I do want to say that uh, I do know that uh, uh, based on what was reported to us, you probably still have an outstanding balance that's due to you, am I right? Yes, that is correct. Have all your financial uh, invoices and reports been given to GVB yet? Uh, yeah, all except for our annual financial report. And that should be submitted. If you can take the time to please submit that uh, to GVB and then to CC us a copy, we would really appreciate that. Absolutely. And then, of course, the continued funding. I, I know that you want to be able to sustain and, and grow upon that, and, and we will likewise do the same, just to try and keep it intact. Fair enough? Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Have Thank a you. wonderful day. Keep doing the good job that you guys do. Thank and and I say that for all the the organizations that have been here before us too and those that are coming up and this is really important to give the community, our island of Guam, the opportunity to hear what each and every nonprofit organization is doing to help make a difference for our island community. More importantly for, for our children and our young adults. Uh, I think that's a very impressive to make sure that the mission mandates are being, uh, you know, advocated for and perpetuated in, in the form of what you guys do. So I'm going to keep working at that. Sina uh, Next on the, is Hatsa here yet? If not, I'll go ahead and work with, I have the Pacific War in the Museum. Are you, please? Thank you, Mel. Homatak Foundation. Um, Mr. Munya, if you can, uh, submit your written testimony to our committee, please. I have Ms. Bernie here on the side. Okay, thank you. Homatak Foundation, Pacific War uh, Museum. Um, is Ahmad uh, Taltaltano Farms here? Yes, you can come up to the table. Homatak? Oh, you're not holy. Okay, just tell me when you're ready, uh, Mr. McDonald. Are you, are you ready to present? I'm sure. I'm waiting. Okay, we sh we we can we can still go. Inet and Pago, you're here. Please come to the table. Whoever you need to come to the table, please. And I also know that the Guam Humanities Council is here. I see them. You're more than welcome to come on up. You. you can also pull a chair, Monica. Come on, both of you up. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the Pacific War on the Museum Foundation. Please. Good morning, Senators Tina Munion Barnes and Senator Ada. My name is Mella Gerber. Um, I'm with the Pacific War Museum Foundation. The Pacific War Museum was founded in May 2001 by John Gerber and continues to operate to this day as an educational and historical value with, with sorry, to this day as an educational tool with historical values. Our organization's mission is to educate the general public in the heritage and traditions of the military and to help explore history of the relationship between the military and the island people of the Western Pacific, to stimulate and to balance perspective and accurate historic historicography on the nature of conflict in the, in the Pacific with the emphasis of World War II, Korea, uh, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Um, With the funding that um, the GVB allows, uh, helps us to continue operations as well as you know education. Uh, we have had um, public schools come to the museum free of charge, um, and also um, we have private schools that have come through, and um, 
visiting Japanese students. So with the help of GVB, GVB's funding, it allows us to continue um, to educate our um, students as well as our visitors. As for, um, let's see, Whew. this That's is the first okay. time for me. <laughs> You're doing John fine. John has always done this yeah. before, I'm yeah. sorry. You're doing um, great. Um, We do continue to get funding from uh, GVB. Um, we do have um, an outstanding balance. I'm not really too sure how much, but um, most our our filings have been um, up to up to date with all our filings, except for I wasn't sure we were supposed to submit our our statements to this office, but we will we will do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, and thank you for uh, allowing the students to come in for free. It really makes a difference for them as they continue to to learn about our history and our wartime, and you know, at least the stories of what needs to be told. Yes. Yes. So um, I do see that uh, there is a balance that's due to you, and I understand mm -hmm. from GVB that all the reporting requirements and the invoices have been submitted. Yes. And um, if there's anything else that you'd like to add, please don't hesitate to submit any written testimony to our committee. But other than that, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Have any questions? questions. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I know that John, John Gerber will be very proud um, uh, looking down and, and seeing that the, that the museum that he worked so hard for, that it's, it's still there, it's still thriving, and, and, and hundreds and thousands of people still come in to visit. I understand just recently uh, some of the Marine Corps uh, uh, veterans were there at a function that we yes, met and, and, yeah. uh, and they they literally take the time to to reminisce and share their stories uh, with all those that are there yeah. and thank you for the invitation uh, uh, I was there I saw a lot of kids there I saw a lot of veterans there and uh, it, it was it it continues to work its mission mandate, so thank you. Oh, thank okay. you. Uh, next on the agenda, I was told that I uh, missed over... S I have uh, the Humaltuck Foundation sticks. Thank you very much. Oh, you'll wait. Uh, then I have... I did forget about hurrah. I do apologize. I'll call you up after this panel is clear. Inet and Gepal, go, Mr. Regis. You. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Uh, again, we are Inet and Gepal. We are Inet and Gepal, a cultural arts program uh, that has been in existence for over about 16 years already. Uh, we started out at Inarahan Middle School with just the idea of trying to present our culture in a different way to be able to, to look at other avenues in which to be able to express and to be able to find ways that appeals to our young audience. Through the years, of course, we have, as, as most people know, we have, we have garnered uh, incredible recognition both on island and abroad, and we continue to make the impact uh, with our community as well as internationally. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Joe Chris Garrido. This is Taylor Rosario. This is Brandon Fujikawa. This is Noelani Cruz and Emily Malada, all products of the program. Most of them, actually every single one of them now have graduated and have been in the program for over five years at least. So some of them, eight years, nine, ten <laughs> years. Yeah. So we're definitely grateful uh, for, for being here. Um, th uh, our board members are Clint Rigel, sits as president, Josh Dakenko as vice president, Dondi Quintans as secretary, Selena Onodera Salas as board treasurer, Dana Cruz Libby as board assistant board treasurer, Sean Murphy as board member, and Irisa Cristobal as, as well as also a board member. Uh, we again, like I said, we've been in existence for 16 years, and I think our reputation pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, throughout the years, we have been able to travel to almost 24 countries around the world, and we continue to travel, and not necessarily just to travel to experience the travel, but to able to go out there, see what 
what the world is, is, is like and bring that back to the island. The intention for the tourist attraction, for, we've been receiving tourist attraction funds for the last three years. And our focus going into tourist attraction is the investment of the government in the attraction of a destined uh, attraction, right? A tourist attraction. The attraction being the performers. The attraction being the show. Being able to appeal to an international audience. Being able to not only appeal but give these give these members experience to experience the world, but most importantly to come back to the island and to be able to infiltrate into the tourism industry and the visitor industry as well as the cultural industry or the cultural the in in, in a cultural in a, uh, also with the uh, cultural community or the island community. Uh, we service in the last 16 years over 2,000 students. Uh, we service about 100 students every year. Uh, but again, our focus is not necessarily on the on the on the amount of students served, but on the impact we make for our community and the impact we make. So even if our organ, if our if the, the groups here, the the members here, were small in numbers, we're we're big in impact. So when we make a show, it resonates to many people, and it also includes, of course, uh, like uh, other other forms of me uh, uh, expression such as theater. Uh, as well as uh, uh, yesterday, uh, we just launched our first uh, release of Hago, the music video, and I'm not sure if you had saw it, but it is definitely a creative take. It's the first of its kind, and now it's blasting over social media. Just yesterday, we released it, and now we're at 2,000 likes, 2,000 views. So that's overwhelming for us, because you know. Uh, so and it continues to again make an impact in our community. Uh, just last year, we accomplished. Uh, just last year. Uh, we placed third in the world at the International Bucek Mechek World Folk Dance Competition, beating 27 countries. Uh, this year, uh, we had focused a lot on on trying to figure out what these guys want, and one of the things is language, and so we're starting to incorporate more language, a more applicable language, because language is, needs to be relatable and reachable. So things, uh, so our goal is to, by the end of the year, 30% most tomorrow, and to make it again relevant to them. Uh, this Saturday we'll be going to Brazil, <laughs> and uh, so I know that's kind of sh shocking to know that <laughs> We, but uh, most importantly, we feel because we feel like our island deserves to feel to have an, a beacon of greatness, and by being the example of some sort of greatness, we'll be able to inspire others to feel that they can do the same thing. The curriculum that we started in 2000, in, in, that I started in 2000, became the overall curriculum for the for inter for the middle school, and now that's why you see many many um, Fafanagwis or many groups come in in the middle schools because we finally opened the door and we finally broke through that glass ceiling because before when we started there was no curriculum. So after 12 years we finally did it. I'm now sent down to uh, Southern High School to now create a cultural tourism cohort or a, pa or a cultural fine arts program. And this fine arts program is to develop an individual or students that start from the basic dance routine and move into some sort of apprenticeship uh, certification of cultural culture, folk arts, fine arts, tourism. So again, so that's kind of the, the focus. So it's different from like just tourism, but kind of focused on cultural tourism. Uh, we uh, we are at the end of the year, we're hoping to bring in the World Folk Dance Company, the uh, Folk Dance, continue to our World Folk Dance Festival, which we had last year where we brought in the National Folk Dance Company of the Philippines. This year we're, we have already confirmed three to five, I'm kind of get. I don't want to get more than five, but three. To, uh, th uh, we've confirmed five groups: Philippines, Korea, Russia, Poland, and Costa Rica. Our goal is to try to be able to provide uh, our uh, World Folk Dance again uh, uh, festival here in Guam, so that our so that our island community as well can see what we see. Um, and uh, the goal for the board of it, the, our own board, is to be able to secure other revenues and community support to eventually be less reliant on, the, on government assistance. Uh, so we are really pushing on our corporate sponsorship drives, we're really pushing on, on corporate donors and continue to plan for different types of events. Um, the, I, I believe I submitted to you the, the breakdown of the uh, TA, uh, of the funds that, you, that was used uh, last year. Uh, Brandon Fujikawa is one of the products of the fund. He sits as a teacher's assistant and also as trainer. Uh, we also use the funds for uh, uh, for for supplies and other necessities of, for that that is uh, that is nece that's necessary to run the program. Uh, I think, uh, and again, the funding is again. I just wanted to stress that the funding is used to develop the attraction. The attraction being providing a viable show and viable tools for these students and, uh, and the island to be able to attract visitors, right? And to be able to attract, and not only to attract, but also to come back and bring back to the island. So when 
for example, if Joe Chris, who's from Talafofu, he's playing at the court in Talafofu. He's now getting ready to uh, fundraise every single year this year from a bar fundraiser to a car fundraiser to everything like that. Caught Kelleguin, right, also. And from him to do all of that, now being able to go to Brazil, and he still performs at the Sheraton. By the way, we also got an, a contract with Outrigger just recently, just the, uh, for six-month try run. It's the first now full Chamorro show in the heart of Tuman, and we're trying it out for six months. So that's a, a tremendous accomplishment because, again, that's what we're here is to not only be able to provide a cultural relevancy, but also to be able to give these students and or give these members an opportunity to go and contribute back into the tourism industry. And by, by performance, by, by this work or by, by this program, we're able to do so. So the point is, is that he goes to Brazil, comes back, and he works at Outrigger. <laughs> 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 and that's, that's the attraction. So. Appreciate it. I, any I, of you guys have any comments? Yes. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> um, Go ahead and speak into the mic and just mention your name for the record. Uh, half a day, uh, my name is Taylor Rosario and uh, I've been dancing for six years and um, it's just been nothing but an amazing experience for me. Uh, it's, uh, well, when we go off island it's, and we meet different cultures, it makes us back you know where we're from and it makes us remember what we need to do for our culture and the way we see it is like when we go back there it changes us by heart and it gives us that push to fight more for our culture and the love that we have for this group and this family and all that is done for us is just nothing but great and yeah it's it's amazing Appreciate those comments. Any thoughts? Manana My name is Amelisa Mulata, and I just like to say that this group has done so much for me. Um, through this group, I've had the opportunity to um, be a full-time dancer at the dinner show, the Tata Tasi dinner show. But we all know that that's not full tomorrow. So through this program, I'm hoping to see more opportunities for our full tomorrow dance shows in two months so we can present something that is more relevant to our culture, to our tourists. So that's what I'm hoping for this group. And when we go out, when we go on trips, you know, I always see hope for our culture because the people that we meet just have so much pride in their culture. And when I come back, I bring back that hope and just want people to know. Yeah. Thank you. That's amazing, the two of you. Please. Oh, okay. Half a day. My name is Nolani Cruz, and I have been dancing for Denning Apago for about seven years. I actually started when he was at IMS, and um, then he moved on to Southern, and I moved on to Notre Dame. So I'm a graduate at ND, <laughs> and um, even though he was at Southern, you know, I continued to go to rehearsals, go to performances. Even if it was at Southern, you know, I made my way through because with this group, it made me who I am today. And even up to this very day, I'm still, you know, growing. But with this group, it's helping me. And, you know, with all the traveling and going off island and experiencing different cultures, it, you know, it inspires me. And I hope it inspires you guys here at home because we all go out there not only bringing our group, but, you know, we're bringing everyone here. And whatever we do back there, we bring it back home. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Are you okay? Why just, please. Uh, half a day, my name is Joe Chris Garrido. Uh, the reason, like, sorry. That's nervous. okay, <laughs> no, please. <laughs> just, just relax, you're fine. First of all, I would like to thank everyone. You're very welcome. For everything that you have done to like, make us go out and per per perpetuate our culture here and off island and the things that that like you've done is it made it made us like uh, do our thing the thing that we love to do and uh, I'm sorry I'm very, I'm very bad no at that, that you, you're doing fine <laughs> uh, just thank you for the support that you've been giving us and without the, the support that you gave us probably we would 
break down. Yeah. No, and without like, your support, we would we would be. Yeah. Be. Okay. <laughs> be okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I I really appreciate your comments and and for all of you uh, young uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's it's really encouraging, at least for us, to know that that this means a lot to you and that you have uh, courage enough to come here to help present uh, with your chairperson or with your coordinator to help make a difference. But to see the, the work that you do, but more importantly, bring back the hope that, that, that you want to see the perpetuation of who we are as island people and promoting our culture through dance, through Chamorro, presentations and making sure that even the heart of Tumon has a, a, a full Chamorro show. It, it truly is a blessing. And, and this is why we do it, and this is why we provide those resources. And when Mr. Rages had asked me, um, should I just come myself or bring any support? And I said, it's important that you bring your young support to see uh, so they have a better understanding that it is not easy to get the resources and as critical and tight as, 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 as our government is that this kind of program is still very important and key so people like you can continue to grow, learn, but also to give back. And just by hearing all of you speak, I know I got one more, <laughs> but um, please don't ever be afraid to say that and, and, and you're doing great. You know, a lot of times when you speak from here, that's the best thing to do. <laughs> and you did that very, very well, right, Senator? Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, nasty. keep doing what you do right. Then I have this young gentleman. But thank you. Thank you for, for sharing. Hafri, I'm Guawusi Brandon Fujikawa. I'm the Magalai of Inanig of Pagu. I've been dancing for nine years. Um, first of all, this group has impacted my life and has made me the, or has been a part of the reason why I am the man I am today. And I'm very grateful for every experience in this group. And um, as Mr. Ray just said, that um, I am being paid out of the TA funding for being a trainer slash teacher's assistant. And um, I'm just blessed and uh, grateful to be given the opportunity to become, right out of, become a teacher, trainer assistant right out of high school. And um, I'm not just, I don't just, assist him in training or is in teaching i also assist him like with like i'm kind of that communication uh link between him and my younger brothers and um yeah it's you know i try to make them understand everything that we go through and whatever they don't understand and i'm just there and to be that guidance and that leader to you know show them that they are good enough. We're all we all are good enough, and to motivate them, pretty much, and uh, just the love for this group is just I don't know. I take it day by day, and just love what I do. Oh, thank you for sharing, and, and um, again, it's it's really important that uh, as as we continue to look at the programs, as programs like you. Uh, to bring out the, the maturity and the work ethics that you guys have to share, to teach, to continue to teach, but also to also uh, work closely with your brothers and be that communication link, uh, I guess, to, to sometimes the, the leaders, because sometimes it takes a voice within your generation to help bring the communication together. And, and I'm very proud of you guys. And, and the work that you do, and that's why I thought it was important that Mr. Rages bring you guys so that you can share your voice to our, our island residents to know that this program is very critical, very vital, and what you receive from the Tourist Attraction Fund working closely with GVB and the legislature, that it's important that we sustain that. Uh, I do know that you have you've submitted your invoices, yes. right? Yes. And and uh, you also uh, are working on a sustainable uh, sustainability plan, right? Yes. With yes. the future fundraisers yes. that you Definitely. have, and, Definitely. and trying to be less sustainable. Less sustainable. Yes. Just, less reliant on the government. Uh, on the government. To continue. So yes. I appreciate that, and 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 those are encouraging because, as you know, um, 
there are other groups out there who are also willing to uh, are wanting to tap into the same uh, market dollars and mm -hmm. and we have to be able to share it sure sometimes uh, giving a little to a lot yeah. <laughs> uh, can continue to go a long way okay. so thank you thank you all for being here I appreciate it and and um, what you've said today is very encouraging appreciate don't ever give up on that hard work that you guys do okay thank you Thanks. 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 Next we have is the Guam uh, Humanities Council. Thank you for your patience. Chair. Um, Senator Barnes, thank you for um, providing me and another member of the council staff, Monica Flores, the opportunity to report on how our organization has used our fiscal year 2016 appropriation that we received uh, from the legislature uh, through the Guam Visitors Bureau in the amount of $20,000. Um, as you know, um, I'm Kimberly Keelang, the executive director and uh, the Guam Humanities Council, which is now doing business as Humanities Guahan, is a nonprofit organization that is committed to providing foundational support and educational resources for the people of Guam uh, through innovative humanities programs. Our mission is to foster community engagement and dialogue, to inspire critical thinking, to celebrate diversity, enrich the quality of life of island residents through the power of the humanities. And we fulfill this mission uh, by presenting and supporting a diverse range of quality uh, public humanities programs that include a, a community-based family literacy program, community grants to no small nonprofit organizations, interpretive exhibitions, documentary films with discussion, cultural workshops and performances, uh, workshops for educators as well as youth, community conversations, and more. Um, in terms of the, um, the fiscal year 2016 appropriation, Humanities Guahan has spent $10,914 to partially support three separate humanities-based projects. Um, these include the film premiere and educational tour of A Place to Stand that took place in October 2015, the rebranding of our organization as Humanities Guahan uh, from January to April of this year, and the 25th anniversary celebration um, of our organization um, which will, has been taking place since the beginning of the year with a major um, celebration and events in September 2016. Um, Moneka is going to begin by talking about a place to stand and give you some details, and then I'll talk about our rebranding efforts, and then both of us will talk about our upcoming um, exhibition with Manny Chrysostomo. Good morning, Chairwoman and Senator Ada. Um, we, the um, Humanities Guahan utilized $5,000 of our funds to partially support our film premiere and educational tour of A Place to Stand, which is a documentary based on the memoir of the same name by Jimmy Santiago Baca, who is recognized and celebrated as one of America's greatest living poets. A Place to Stand is the story of Mr. Baca's transformation from a functionally illiterate convict to an award-winning poet, novelist, and screenwriter. The council brought Mr. Baca, as well as the film's director and producer, Daniel Glick, to Guam for a week-long educational tour that included a series of readings, discussions, and other presentations with the Department of Youth Affairs, where we met with nearly 50 um, youth, incarcerated youth and 15 staff of the Department of Youth Affairs, the Department of Corrections, where we met with uh, approximately 150 inmates and over 75 Department of Corrections officers and staff. JP Torres Alternative School, where we met with all of their, their student body and several of their teachers, and the University of Guam, where we met with over 40 students in the um, uh, taking classes actually through GIF, who we also partnered with for this project. 
So um, other public programs included a film screening of Blood In and Blood Out, co-written and produced by Mr. Baca at the University of Guam, a place to stand community screening on October 15th at Southern High School Auditorium. And also um, we hosted an educator's workshop prior to the tour, which introduced teachers to an innovative classroom curriculum developed for the film also called A Place to Stand, where we hosted 25 teachers who were also able to receive professional development college credits for attending this workshop. And so um, such, uh, you know, uh, these educational programs that uh, were made possible through the funding and were part of this project helped to benefit the overall health and well-being of our youth and of our island and to just promote more civic engagement and, um, and really pr inspire a lot of people to uh, see transformation through arts and the humanities. Okay, the council has received an additional 10,000 in two installments in 2016, uh, one on March 22nd and the other on May 10th. Um, of that money, we have spent $3,675 on the rebranding of our organization as Humanities Guahan to more accurately reflect who we are and what we do as an organization to promote and preserve the history, culture, language, and arts of Guam, and particularly those of the indigenous Chamorro people. We thought it was really important to um, use the indigenous uh, term for Guam, which is Guahan, which reflects uh, much of the we we work we do, which focuses on Chamorro history and culture. As part of this rebranding effort, um, Humanities Guahan redesigned our website, and we held a public launch event, open house, uh, for the public um, on April 21st, 2016. Um, this year um, marks, as I mentioned earlier, the 25th anniversary of our organization. And part of that rebranding effort was part of this kind of 25th celebration to kind of talk about and to address some of the significant changes that we have undergone as an organization um, over the past 11 years. Um, we have spent some of um, the $10,000, a small amount, on the planning and collaterals for several upcoming anniversary programs and events. And the remaining funds that we've received to date, as well as the funds that still remain outstanding that we have not received yet from GVB, uh, will be used to partially support the presentation, which includes the research, the design, and production of an interpretive retrospective exhibition project highlighting the career of Guam's sole Pulitzer Prize winner, multimedia photojournalist Manny Chrysostomo. Um, we are doing this um, exhibition in partnership with Pulitzer Prizes to mark their Centennial um, Campfires initiative. Um, we're very proud to be um, partnering with such a prestigious organization and to really use that funding along with our funding from the legislature to produce this really groundbreaking exhibition of, of Manny's work. So we're very excited about that. And I think, Monica, you, you want to mention a few things about Manny's exhibition? Sure, okay, so um, a lot of people are familiar with Manny Chrysostomo's work, but a lot of the younger generation haven't, will have an opportunity to be introduced to his work. This is including everything from the award-winning Pulitzer Prize um, series, as well as two other very important uh, award-winning series that have, have received prestigious awards for human rights documentary um, in, in photojournalism one being called The Weight, which documents um, childhood obesity, and the second, um, The Leftover People, which, which um, chronicles the transitional Hmong community between Thailand and Sacramento. Uh, along with that, we are going to highlight um, photos from Legacy, Laddie Magazine, and really talk about how um, images of islanders have been reinterpreted and um, re-envisioned through our own making and through our own creativity really um, kind of made, made possible with Manny and even the work of some of his, of his brothers as the foundation for, for um, indigenous photojournalism and art. Um, importantly, um, we're also gonna be bringing Manny back home to Guam. Um, he'll be here for the opening of the exhibition and for two weeks. Um, to do programming with us. Um, he'll be doing presentations about his Pulitzer work, 
as well as about his work in Guam, the legacy is Laddie, as Monica present, uh, mentioned, and also his more recent work uh, for the Festival of Pacific Arts. Um, we're also going to be doing a student workshop. Um, so students will be introduced to Manny in a very different way and also be able to um, work with him directly um, on photography and the whole practice of photojournalism. Um, he's also going to be giving um, exhibition tours as well to the public. So we're really fortunate not only to do the exhibition, which of course Manny is partnering with us on to develop, um, but also we'll have him here to um, engage in programming with, with our community. Very much. Congratulations on your 25th anniversary. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And uh, I have, do you have any questions? Okay. Um, good job. Thank you for your submission and the reports. Oh. Great. And um, I think the 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 plan for sustainability and trying to wean off the government funding is probably something that we can we can have you submit to see what other fundraising efforts and um, other uh, resources uh, that you get from the community to be able to, to show that sustainability. Yes, actually we do a great deal of fundraising. Um, with the 25th um, anniversary celebration or as part of it, we're holding um, a, uh, a gala event, which is all gonna be based on sponsorships. Um, we're also proud to say that through um, a major sponsorship from the Bank of Guam, we're going to be producing an exhibition catalog um, of, of this exhibition with Manny. So that's a constant um, issue for us is sustainability. And we've been very fortunate to receive other grants um, outside of, of obviously this appropriation um, that we work really hard to write and su to submit to help support our organization in addition to all the sponsorships as well. Thank you, thank you very much. So thank you for your report. And you've submitted uh, this report also to the Guam Visitors Bureau, right? Yes, we have. Good, thank yes. you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Oh yeah, yes. we do, Monica reminded, we do have a balance of $5,000 okay. that we have yet to receive, receive from GVB. But and that invoice has been turned in. Uh, we haven't turned it in yet, but we will. Please do. Okay, thank Sign you. Namasi. Thank you. I want to apologize to the Hurrah Academy. I over I left <laughs> sorry I just missed you guys uh, I will go ahead and call Homatuck Foundation Horal Academy see who can I see Mr. McDonald back there but let me do we have enough You'll be you'll be after them, Mr. McDonald. Do I have Hurao is here and Humatak, right? I'll go ahead. If I may, Mr. Uh, Kanata, give Hurao because I did miss them earlier. <laughs> Please, Malika, Senator. Um, Hafadeids and Manana Sizos, a Chairwoman Munya Barnes, and Honorable Senator Ada. And I will be speaking on behalf of Harao Academy. Dispenses at Taikwi Si Anne Marie Arceo, Gaigi Gui Giza Poland, Para Your World Youthday. So I am part of the new board of directors which was established uh, this past summer. The mission of Harao Academy is to promote and perpetuate the Chamorro language through culture, through immersion community programs and the development of educational materials and other related areas that support this mission. The Chamorro Immersion Program leads to increased fluency of the Chamorro language. In the summer of 2015, Hara went through re reorganization and adopted policy requiring family commitment to immersion as a prerequisite to enrollment. Uh, this methodology builds a family support system around the enrolled children encouraging daily use of the Chamorro language in the home. Past through appropriations awarded to the Harao Academy for fiscal year 2016 were used to fund Chamorro immersion educators for Tempun Somnak, Tempun Managof, and Tempun Fespat. Tempun Somnak is our summer program which ended last month. Our students were taught the language in various ways to include song, dance, weaving, cooking, reading, and writing. 
We see many students entering Harao without knowing a single Chamorro word, but by the end of the summer program can carry on conversations in Chamorro with their peers and fluent speakers. At the, time, at the same time, uh, the self-esteem increases and a sense of cultural self-identity is realized. Children who've been attending the academy for a few years now become peer mentors, helping the new students learn the language through interaction. Youth that grow up in the Harao Academy embracing values and lessons they have learned return as adjudanti to continue their growth by giving back to the younger kids as a form of service learning. A first time Harao parent from this past summer said watching her three-year-old communicate with his grandfather in the Chamorro language filled her heart. We witness kids as young as three years old bridge the language barrier and communicate with their grandparents in their native tongue. The kids become so fluent they surpass their parents to the point where the kids begin to correct their parents' speech and help them translate English words into Chamorro. And I should know I'm one of those parents. <laughs> Tempun Managaf is our after-school program which works hand in hand with Tempun Somnak as it reinforces what the kids learn during the summer and builds upon their current knowledge. This past school year, we had a couple of kids who enrolled in Tempun Menagov that didn't attend um, our Tempun Somnak, our summer program. So for the first few weeks, it was like a really steep learning curve for the kids, but with family support through immersion, they, it helped them through it, and they now speak the Chamorro language as if it was their first, and they've only been in the program less than a year. Tempun Festback um, this summer was a cultural experience of a lifetime for the children of Harau, especially being at the Chamorro village every day during Festback. The kids were able to interact with the different cultures from around the Pacific, including ma uh, many local artisans. While many of us could not experience most of FESPAC due to work and prior commitments, parents were able to see the excitement and of the faces of their children through pictures posted on social media and the pride of the artisans sharing their craft of the children of Harau. In addition, the Harau Academy has caught the eye of the Sackman Chamorro group from San Diego who participated in FESPAC and has taken the Harau students out to experience riding on a traditional seafaring canoe. This group desires to donate their sacrament to Harau, leaving it in the hands of our children, hoping to keep the seafaring tradition alive through the youth. Unfortunately, in our current capacity, Harau does not have the ability to maintain the sacrament, but will develop the curriculum and an apprenticeship program around the sacrament. Uh -huh. Community and family immersion classes were also developed and continued throughout the year, with this summer being the busiest that we had established four different support groups based by level of fluency, and each one kind of grows at its own pace. Um, the support groups exist to help parents learn and use the Chamorro language at home with their kids, as learning Chamorro doesn't end with Harao. It needs to be continued in the homes. During these classes, parents have the opportunity to share their convictions of the Chamorro language. Some say they didn't feel complete in their lives because they, they can't speak the language fluently. Others feel like they had a hole in their heart their entire lives. So others just want to be able to communicate with their parents or even their grandparents in their native tongue and to pass something down to their children. In these classes, the families are given a safe zone where they don't feel like they have to worry about um, feeling ashamed if they make a mistake, feeling embarrassed when they try to speak the language. It's a place where we all learn together. You know, these groups are not limited to just families. A singles group was also developed to help individuals who yearn to learn the language in hopes of one day teaching it to their future children. We have noticed an increase in demand for these immersion groups, and to meet these demands, um, training is necessary for additional or more tomorrow immersion educators. Funding was also used to purchase a bus for the hands-on experience portion of the program. This works in conjunction with the immersion lessons, enriching the curriculum. The kids were able to have weekly field trips to historical sites and other locations related to the curriculum being taught that week. The children just don't stay in a school or classroom setting. You know, they, all day, they, they go out into the community to learn about the culture, feeling it, tasting it, seeing it, and breathing it. An example would be um, what, we're, what we call Michael Kantantasi, where we had a weekend family overnight at Aruna. 
It was a time for families to bond with their kids and a place to teach them about living off the land and sea, showing them how our ancestors lived. We also told them there's no pelas and kashilas in the jungle, so they need to figure out how to live off the land. Um, they had hands-on experience in descaling and gutting fish, uh, fresh tiao that was caught that morning. And you know, man, to my surprise, they, they, they really loved it. You know, you were watching them descaling the fish and gutting it, and they were just standing there talking. It, it didn't bother them, you know, they, they loved it. So building off of Harao's Henengi chart, funding was used to update curriculum and current activities based on the core principles for both Tempun Somnak and Tempun Managa. Inclusive of, but not limited to dance, song, chant, cooking, reading, and writing. The Harao's Henengi chart was also adopted as part of the Imagine Guam initiative based on its core values. The academy, was, uh, the academy also developed curriculum for a daycare and preschool program and are working towards expanding and growing from the current repertoire of just an after school and summer program to an early childhood program targeting children ages one to four years old. So some of our future plans as Harao Academy moves into 2017, there are so many things on our bucket list that we would love to implement. With continued funding from the legislature through the Tourist Attraction Fund, it will help us accomplish our goals. Her Academy is looking into creative income generating opportunities that include, but are in no way limited to, a Tintuli Fund. It piggybacks on Hawaii's The Hawaiian Way Fund. It's a type of donation and workplace giving program. We also hope to create a Sagan Dinanya. It's like a mini cultural village which will be an in indigenous cultural interaction site showcasing different aspects of our unique culture from weaving and cooking to entertainment. We are also looking to our business community to help support a corporate giving or scholarship foundation that would assist families who want to send their children to Harap but do not have the financial means to do so. We also hope to establish two satellite schools, one in the north and the other in the south for families who would like to send their children to Haral but are unable to because it's too far from where their kids live or attend school. Haral Academy is currently pursuing other grant opportunities with the help of our grant writer who came on board this past July. We are planning a symposium to invite local businesses to a showcase of our present and future immersion programs. We hope to garner their support to help us strengthen our effort to ensure the continuation of these programs in our future community endeavors. In the end, our children will carry on the knowledge and beliefs that the Harao Academy instills in their lives and in the community. Knowing who they are will give them a sense of self-identity, which will in turn help our society and community as a whole. If we don't know who we are, how can we know where to go? Harao's vision is that one day, our children and our people will know, practice, and embrace what it means to be tomorrow in today's word. Men mama tai papa i manya naita siha, zen kuntoro i tiningo niha. With the average fluent tomorrow speaker being around 50 years and older, and the life expectancy of our indigenous people between the ages of 65 and 70 years old, the time is now. Now is the time to bridge this gap and give our future generations something to hold on to. I would like to extend a heartfelt undunkulu nasidzu osma asi for your support. Without it, we wouldn't be here today. And I am humbly asking you, not just as a board member, but as a mother and a chamorro, to continue or even increase your support for our mission, which will leave our children with something no one that nobody can ever take away from them. Mama Kat Esta Paramagoti Kustumbri, Ilanguahi Zeni Koturan Samoru Sasiga hit, Man Mahapmi. Nai Animu Paratoru I Man Nativu, Menteni Koturan Samoru, Menteni I Familia, Sidzo Us Maasi. And the young man. Tamanama song and nervous. Because they get one of what, it's okay. Uh, for day, uh, I know I'm going to see Diego. Uh, I've always heard of Harao, but prior, I consider myself uh, right now a recent enrollee as part of the immersion classes for the adults. 
Um, I witness pretty much everything she has testified to um, as a recent enrollee. It's, I feel myself that, you know, I was one of those, or I considered victimization that, I, you know, I didn't know my language. Um, there's no one to blame, really. But coming to Harau, they give you this opportunity to um, do something about it. You know, at, at my age, already past, you know, high school. Um, myself and my other classmates, we we share this this um, this hole, and slowly but surely, through Harau, we're starting to fill this hole. Um, it's it's really enlightening, and our inspiration really does come from these children who are who are speaking. One of the uh, these past summer days, um, one of the children gave me instructions on how to play guitar, and she's only uh, seven, eight years old, and she she told me how to play guitar in tomorrow. So that was a it was a real exciting experience. You know, uh, I couldn't understand her yet. I wanted to at the same time, and again through these uh, immersion classes, it's it's really beautiful to to pursue that. Um, Anne Marie and, and Ray, you know, they they constantly preach this passion and they they constantly look for others who who are willing to share this passion, who are willing to um, go about this passion and it's I really see myself uh continuing volunteering and uh learning from Harau. Uh it's truly a special place. Their dual focus is the language and with any culture on this planet language is key so with language and the young you combine the two and you have a dual main focus which is really it really really important at Harau. This is just my I go mask when for pet soon to her out of that I lean right yeah for your presentation I want to share with you that I truly appreciate the um, the sustainability plan and your efforts moving forward um, it's times like this when I when when I, listening to those that presented before you that I wish I wish the tourist attraction fund could get everything to all the nonprofit organizations to truly perpetuate, advocate, and promote who we are as island people. But more importantly, you talked about our language and, and moving that and making sure that the the language does not get lost and that we bridge the gap between those that, that can speak it fluently to those that have the average of speaking it in conversation but not even able to, to read or write. And then you, you have the younger generation um, and just thoughts in my mind about my three-year-old grandson Tatum who literally picks up the Chamorro words that I say and even the slang and it's like grandma what'd you say yeah. <laughs> he said oh and I said you're not supposed to say that and he said yeah but you said it and it's you know cut off <laughs> and it's it's bad for me and then I realized that that um him at that age could probably pick up more than a lot of us and and you starting that th that program at the at that very young age between one and four and moving on that i think uh that's something that we can definitely look at also and your true immersion work i did have the opportunity to speak to Anri to see how we can get into that charter system also mm -hmm. and maybe that's something that we can also continue to speak offline on okay. and and share that because she said as soon as she had the um, uh, the vision plan that she'll go ahead and work with me so you can extend that back to her that I'm ready to see what we can do to moving it forward and um, as the oversight chair um, speaker Wampat on Chamorro Affairs she too has been advocating to see how we can give more resources for those who really want to teach the curriculum so please know that and thank you very much for your presentation we will definitely work hard on that sign a Buenas. Buenas. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Senator Ada. Um, my name is Joe Kinata, and on behalf of the Humatak Community Foundation, uh, we're here uh, again before you to sh share 
what we're doing down there and because uh, amazing things are happening down there. And, and also to, to thank you for being, for being supportive at this level. I, I think that, that when you have the support from all levels, you, you, um, you get a, 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 an amazing uh, thing that's happening. And, and um, I brought with me some kids to, to share with you um, and to testify that what we're doing is amazing. Um, the Homata Community Foundation is a volunteer-based organization, meaning that uh, nobody gets paid to do any, everything that we're doing down there, except the incentives that our kids get. And so um, we do have uh, our board members, and our, I'd like to acknowledge the vice chair of the, uh, the Homata Community Foundation is Fred Goffigan, who is sitting in the audience. The Humata Community Foundation was created in uh, 2011. And it was created with a, with a vision, a vision that, um, that is centered and focused on land and water conservation and the preservation of our cultural heritage. And that it is the responsibility of, our, of the community here on Guam and a responsibility that is, um, that is through education, cooperation, and advocacy, all linking to maintaining the balance between the need for natural resources and cultural resources today, and also the need to sustain them for the future. And that is our mission. We have a three-pronged I mean, our vision, we have a three-pronged mission and real simple, heritage, education, and enterprise. And what we want to do, we also want to sustain. Uh, we, have, uh, we have not come up with a sustainability plan, but uh, we have talked about it many times with our board and the community. And, uh, but our focus right now is trying to build um, our community through our, our youth. Um, the Humata Heritage Walking Tour actually is a, an amazing thing that's happened in Humata, and that is where, where youth dedicate their time Tuesday and Thursday evenings to learn about their history, to learn about who they are. And after learning about that, they, they pick a site, a site that they want to focus on. And they learn so much about that site. Uh, and they learn so much that they become docents to that site. And they share, they share the stories of that site with, with uh, visitors, with residents. In fact, I would get parents talking to me saying, you know, there's just so many things I did not know about Homotag. And my kids are telling me about it. And so just right there, testimonies from the parents uh, shows that, that our kids are actually learning so much. Well, they're here today to testify uh, and to give you a, a snip. You know, we have a total of about 53 youth that come uh, to the foundation. We have 53 youth that, some of them in the level of, of uh, you know, just learning, and most of them in the level of mentorship. So the, the older youth actually mentor the younger youth. And a lot of this, uh, a, a parent came up to me and asked me, so what's your curriculum? And um, I am also an educator. And I believe that the simple, the most simple curriculum uh, in teaching is the literacy teaching. And that is you impart the information, you develop their skills, and you give them the opportunity to advocate. And once they advocate it, then, then it's done. And so that's what we're able to do with the uh, heritage, I mean, the um, walking tour. We also have other programs that have been supported or are, have continued to be supported by other organizations, such as the Nature Conservancy, um, uh, NOAA. Uh, and that is looking at the conservation part of, of the heritage uh, mission. Uh, but we're going to focus on um, the support, the funding that actually we get from, from the legislature. Majority or all of it goes to the 
Heritage Walking Tour and the Heritage Village Museum. Um, majority of it goes to the walking tour because the kids, they learn all of this, they prepare themselves, and once they go out and they, they advocate, um, then they get their incentives, they get a stipend, uh, just because they've learned so much. And I think that's the way it, it should happen in all the communities. Um, we are, uh, we have been asked to, to share, uh, again, a template to other communities so that they can start doing the same thing at their village. Um, so I want to give the opportunity to the kids to, uh, to talk about the program itself. Please. Your name. <laughs> Just state your name for the record. Hafade, I'm Karakinato. Before I became a part of the Homata Foundation, I never really knew all that I know today. As a child, I've been told many stories, but being so, as a child, I never really cared to listen. But with having to join this foundation has opened up my eyes to many, of, or to my surroundings. Um, the learning experience has been amazing. Um, I'm older than these guys. I'm, I'm like their mentor too. And having to learn from the Homata Foundation on my surroundings, it's been amazing. And I wouldn't uh, trade it for anything. We're still in the learning process and, and um, having to know more and um, I never knew that we had so much historical sites, historical sites down in Homata or the significance behind it. So I'm glad to have joined this foundation and maybe later, or not maybe, but to pass it down to our younger ones and teach them and make them sit down and listen to the stories that we can tell. Um, I'm proud to see where I've come from and um, just how much the Hamata Foundation has uh, impacted on my life so far and so forth. Thank you and God bless. Hago Mas, Michael Wetzel. Half a day, my name is Tyler Uggin and I'm a Hamata Heritage docent as well as a Umata Coral Reef Ambassador. I have been in this program since it first began, and it's really giving me such a different perspective on history. Because in school, um, they never really give students the opportunity to experience history hands-on. Thanks to this program, I have been able to understand my history much more clearly and coherently firsthand. For as long as I can remember, I have been walking around my village without the knowledge that I have been strolling what can without the knowledge that I, I had been strolling in what can definitely be categorized as a living museum. It's truly giving me a better understanding of my environment and makes me proud to be from Umatic. I had luckily been given the chance to visit the beautiful island of Palau as part of a learning exchange and participate in the first and second Pacific Heritage Youth Summit. This program helps our youth develop new friendships and build on our communication skills as well as our confidence. Thank you. You're welcome, son. Hafre Guahusi Michaela again. I I'm a heritage docent, heritage youth docent. I joined the Humatic Heritage Foundation about three or four years ago. And within those years, my knowledge of the village and Guam expanded. Uh, about the Humatic Heritage Foundation opened my eyes to see the world in a different way, to be able to understand what my ancestors did back then. Um, my experience with the Heritage Foundation has been amazing. I got to meet new people, get involved in so many opportunities, such as the 
as um, a student for the Learning Exchange for Palau and the Pacific Heritage Youth Summit. I got to create new friendships and get to know more. I, get, I got to embrace more knowledge about everything. Good. Hot for day, my name is Amanda Kanata, and in my opinion, the Kamantak Foundation is a very ideal and critical organization in, in Umatic because most of the future generations and, um, you know, our generations are participating in this organization. And um, it betters the people around us, not just ourselves, but around us, and it also helps us get active and encourage the people around us to get active in the community. And it betters the community by maintaining our culture, by maintaining our environment, and helping us learn about and, our, and enhance our, um, like, the things we know about our ancestors, you know? Um, because as he said, we have Tuesdays and Thursdays to learn, like, all about our history and ancestors and the things they used to do. So it's, like, a really good opportunity. And we, um, some things we do around Umatic is we do the tours, like he said, which, you know, we don't um, do it like all the time. Like he said, we get a stipend, but we don't really do it for the stipend. We do it because we want to help um, promote, you know, the culture, our history within Umatic and the things we learn so that the people we tell them to, you know, could tell the people around us and it gets all around, you know, Guam. And so that's really the, the goal of the tours and it's not like the foundation was to me like when I didn't know about it I was just like oh the foundation but now that I'm in it I'm like wow this is like amazing you know because like he said they have trips to Palau you could go to summon it's all played for like you don't have to like you know it's the burden to you know get fundings from your parents and stuff but this one it like you get to learn from your community for free, you know? You get to learn about other islands for free. Like, we had a summit and Palau, Yap, and, you know, Saipan came over and, you know, we got to exchange um, cultures with our communities and it was like a really good experience. And we also got to like know them, you know? So we had a good friendship with them and it was really fun. And that was just recently, because we got that shirt recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. So. Um, we also have like, we're sort of like partnered with Ukra, which is the coral reef ambassadors, like he said. So we learn a lot about the rich to reef stuff and we also um, try to help it. Like we participated in a project which we um, planted trees so we could like stabilize the dirt and stuff so that, you know, it doesn't go down to the coral and kill it, you know, cause we need fish, you know, so, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, a really good foundation to get active if you're like a hands-on learner, even if you're like a visual learner, because Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, we, we like watch movies about our history. He tells us stories, he, you know, he, and when I was, like, like Tyler said, while I was um, little, I didn't know about all the historical sites in, Huma in Humatic, so like while I'm driving down, I'm like, oh, those bridges are historical. Look at that, the school is historical. Oh, did you know that's a church? <laughs> you know, like people look at these rocks and they're like, what is that? I'm like, that's ruins of the first church. Don't step on it, you know? <laughs> you know, respect it. So it's like, I get to learn a lot of things and have fun and She's I get really to, you know, <laughs> I'm really nervous, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> but yeah. I get to like learn a lot about our community, our history, our ancestors, and it's just a fun experience. Like, like you said, the stipend. I don't even care for the stipend, honestly. You know, we don't even get stipend for Tuesdays and Thursdays and all the other things. Like, it's just it's so fun to like experience what you know your ancestors did. Like, we also learned how to do the slingstone stuff. You know, when you put a limestone thing, you like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was like really fun, and we also learned how to make like a Chamorro instrument. Bella Boom Susan, and I got to make one, but I didn't <sighs> finish it. Yeah, but I got to make one, and it was so cool. And it's like a string, <laughs> just tap the wood on it. It's really cool. Yeah, and so it's just like you know, it's really fun to experience things that your ancestors experienced, and to like feel a connection between them, because. 
I don't speak tomorrow if I like really want to, but you know with school it's like you don't really learn it, learn it. You just, you know, it's something you go to. It's not really like, you know, you can't really fluently speak it in school. It's not really, you know, because the school, it's okay for the school to like teach it and stuff, but they don't like really enforce it. Like you have to know this, you need to speak it. It's just like you get an A if you get the test right and you just forget it the next week. So, you know, with this, I he's like gonna teach us how to speak Chamorro, and I'm like really excited about that because I know he's gonna make it like successful, and you know we're gonna learn how to speak it. Yeah. So now I could, you know, talk to my grandma, talk to my mom and dad, <laughs> like you know I'm speaking Chamorro. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really excited for that, and it's just like a really good opportunity, not just for like right now, but like for future um, things, like if I applied to college or a job, yes. I got so many experience. I got reef experience. I got architecture experience from the summit. I got like public speaking like this, this you know, amazing. this is like, yeah. it's a really good opportunity. <laughs> so I'm happy I joined. I just joined last year and I experienced all of this. So, you know, it's, it's really good. I learned a lot in a year. So, yeah. well, you get an A plus, honey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna read this, but I'll, yeah. like, I'm I stuttering. see everybody in the background, you know, even saying, "Oh yeah, it's a sling like that." Well, no, no, really. Uh, all kidding aside, um, thank you for sharing your perspective. Let me finish him, and then I'll go ahead and comment. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. thank you. No, 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 no. Uh, excellent presentation. Hafidei uh, Gwagusi Lazar Kanata. Um, through the years that the Humatsa Community Foundation has been established, um, I've seen that it plays many roles in our community. Through the Heritage Youth Program, which I've been a part of for about three years, uh, I've seen the foundation assume a special role in which it instills generations of wisdom and knowledge in the minds of not just select individuals, but, um, but that select individuals who have access to privileged resources, but to the, entire of the entirety of the youth of the village. This creates an environment where history, heritage, and culture are the paramount values. We have learned so much from the last three years about our village and our culture. By mastering the information that is passed down to us, we in turn become advocates that spread this knowledge to visitors from as close as Malesa to even as far as Korea. In the past year, we have hosted delegations from all over the world, like Singapore and the Solomon Islands. We've even hosted the Asian and Pacific offices of the Nature Conservancy. When I speak about the history of Humatic, I say it with confidence because I understand and comprehend exactly what I'm saying. And I see it not only in myself, but in all my cousins that make up the entirety of the youth program. Uh, every time we meet up, I get to see like little 12 year olds reciting information that you only hear in history documentaries. I see the results and I really do believe in this program and I thank you for the support that you've given us throughout the years. And I feel that with your continued support, we can only become better. We can only improve. Thank you, and Sisi Osmasi. Agamas, yeah. Yeah, you can give yourself a round of applause. Yeah. We should have been doing that for all the other presentations because they're all just as excellent. But um, Mr. Kanata, the presentation and hearing it from the children and, and being able to, and the students, the docents, to be able to say, this is what I want to do, this is what I've learned, this is what needs to be done, wanting to learn the language even more so, and just being, you know, you've been on for about a year, and, and just the excitement and the passion and the glee, I, I literally, the, the, the sparkle that I see in your eyes and the presentation from you, all of you here, I want to say thank you. I, I know you said you didn't have a sustainability plan, but I think what's more important is as you, continue, as you work that, and try and, and work that plan to get away from the government funding resources. I think there's other alternatives that we can work to enhance and, 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 and get the resources that you need. I also noted, Mr. Kanata, that you also talked about the FK Sanchez and the submission of the, um, the charter and the application. Yes, yeah. unfortunately, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, in order for you to get a successful application, you have to have a facility. Um, and uh, the FQ Sanchez School at this point is not ready for, for anybody to come in. The Guam Preservation Trust, of which I uh, am the Chief Program Officer, have already spent uh, close to $300,000 to do all of the paperwork, everything up 
to the 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 bidding of of the um, the rehabilitation. Yes. Uh, at this point, we're still waiting for the funds. So uh, that's another uh, testimony, and that's another story. But uh, I wanted to to impress upon you that you are you are hearing it from the the youth. You're hearing it from the kids. Um, we haven't. I, I'm not too sure whether we brought in, but we we got letters from students, not only in Korea, but students in our school system that have come down, and uh, the kids have shared the, the, the stories, their histories. Um, we have uh, people that responded from the different countries that uh, learned so much from, from, from this walking tour, or even from just being in Homatak. Uh, and so uh, this, this, and I, I said earlier, amazing things are happening. And if we keep doing what we're doing, I think uh, we will get to, to our, our goal. And I said earlier that it is our commitment from this body is to at least try and sustain what's being afforded to today. Okay. And then if, if God willing, we, we get the blessings of having more resources, then we can revisit like we've done in the past to give additional yes. funding. Um, that is why, ladies and gentlemen, it's really important that the people of Guam have a better understanding of what what you guys do, what you continue to teach, especially with the younger generation. This is what it's all about. It's about sharing your vision, sharing what you've gone through, sharing your experience, and sharing it to the people of Guam so that they know that the reason why the funding is being provided by the Tourist Attraction Fund with the legislature support, that this is why it needs to continue to be given and that we can't give up on that funding. So, so w with the funding that you're going to provide us, we sat down and spoke to the youth and we asked them, what. What is it that you want to do to make it better? And they've come up with great ideas. And one idea that she mentioned was uh, to, to uh, say it in Chamorro, say their, share their histories in Chamorro. And, and we are going to do that. The other idea was to have a costume period where when they're talking about the history that they're dressed in that costume for that period. So that's another idea that we want to be able to to so that so that becomes more a living museum. Uh, that exactly the kids what see. the mandate is. Yes. Yes, and 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 that could definitely be part of the sustainability plan and moving forward to making sure that that all gets integrated mm -hmm. into the plan. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. Want to thank you, kids. Um, you did. Did you get the full funding from GVB? Or is uh, there still a balance? There's still, there's still a balance. I'm, I'm not too sure. I have, have to go back turned, and reconcile. And, oh. and have you turned the invoices into GVB? We're preparing everything to turn into... F as and the, the financial yes, reporting. Yeah. And if you can submit a copy to sure. us, we would appreciate yeah. it. Sayonara, Ma, thank, thank, you. thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for an awesome presentation. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, next, ladies and gentlemen, on up four, I do know we have Amat Tal Tal Tano Farms. Hadza uh, uh, Cultural Preservation Foundation. I have the Guam Symphony Society and Guma. As you come up and start getting set up here, I'm going to ask to just have a one minute recess so that we can just take a commercial break and I could, and then we'll be right back. Let nature take its course for one minute. Thank you.
confident. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say thank you. We're back from recess. The Committee on uh, Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Ground Preservation Trust holding the informational hearing on all the nonprofit organizations that receive pass-throughs from the Guam Legislature account with the Tourist Attraction Fund. So, up next, uh, we do have the Amat Taltal uh, Tano Farms, and then after that will be Hadza, and then Guma. That's who I have up here, right? The three, and then we'll have the Symphony next, and and a couple of others. I think uh, Wifey's also here, so they'll be next. Thank you very much. So, Amat Taltal Tano Farms, please proceed. Uh, my name is Bernice Nelson, and from Amutatotano. I also have Bill McDonald, where both of us are farmer. And then I have my volunteer. Um, I have four girls. One is Tusil. They're all each going to read a letter. Uh, Reda is our ED, but she's off island for yes. a medical purpose. Tusil uh, is the one that keeps the, the farmers from getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> she cooks at the farm and answer the phone for um, uh, tours, to make tour. Penny is the one that keeps the farm clean, which is pull the grass and paint or whatever that we need to do in the farm. And Bird is the one that do a research through the internet and all over the world to see what plan is, is um, used for. And, and Billy Joe is my apprentice. So each one of the girls that have their parts in the farm, and I have two guys. One is uh, do irrigation. He's one of the volunteer too, and I have two that I, I give them. You know, I pay them uh, do the heavy works at the farm. Okay. And um, and thank you for all your help. Um, and we'll start it out with Bill McDonald, if he's gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Um, You're very welcome. As you can tell, I'm a very new board member yes. of this uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, I am um, very honored that uh, Ms. Bernie Nelson have asked me to uh, help her out officially. Uh, we started out as farmers exchanging plants, and uh, for our, you know, our, as farmers, we provide basic needs. Then I found out that, uh, not found out, but I knew about it, that it could be considered medicinal. Um, so I am very honored to be part of this Almut Farm, and I will be continuing to help her out. Thank you very much. We have to sail to read what I'm Okay. Um. Hi, I'm Jusel Mansononya. Um, on behalf of Pata Imanalik Tatata, Ame Farm Inc., thank you for appropriating funding for our nonprofit organization for the exposure and enhancement of knowledge of an important aspect of tomorrow culture. That is plant based remedies passed on from generations before us. The preservation of our traditional healing techniques, plants, and oral stories is an important to our organization that is the first native medicinal farm on Guam. Alma Farm was initially developed through the generous award of two acres from the Chamorro Land Trust in 2009. The land was cleared and cultivated by community volunteers, the Office of the Mayor of Dedido and Department of Public Works, from humble beginnings and the passion of many Chamorros to preserve an important heritage. Ame Farm was incorporated in, Dece in December 2013 and expanded from planning to educa educating the tomorrow practice of traditional healing, which are generous appropriation from Public Law 3366. Prior to receiving funding from the Tourist Attraction Fund, Ame Farm had approximately 100 native medicinal plant species. With their funding, an additional 150 plant species from throughout Micronesia, Asia, and the United States were added. Every plant was documented documented with the Shmoro and English names and the healing of specific maladies. Educating native pe people and visitors included demonstrations on the preparation and use of certain plants based on traditional practices. 
oral stories on how these plants were discovered and developed, added important information that opened discussion in which 85% of visitors, visitors considered this very important and 93% appreciated the knowledge and, ex and experience they attained from the lecture and tours as reported in the ha Amit Hamlu. Tomorrow t traditional healing audience program evaluation prepared by Amit Farm to Humanities Guahan. Thanks to your funding that allowed expansion and publicity of Amit Farm Humanities Gohan granted additional funding to enhance the, the already existing tours to include lectures by humanities scholars to discuss the history of traditional healing. Half a day, my name is Penny Asail. Amit Farm is a member of the Community Gardens Group of Guam Non-Communicable Diseases Consortium. We are an active participant in the assessment of villages and organizations throughout the island of Guam to plant community gardens and educate people on sustainable practices and gardening methods. Additionally, Alma Farm has dedicated 10 community garden plots on the farm to provide opportunity for families who are unable to establish gardens at their own homes and to promote healthy eating while increasing fruit and vegetable supplies for families. The work of volunteers from these outreach services attract many visitors to the almond farm to learn about other plants and practices. Almond Farm was awarded an opportunity in the Guam Seal Bus Stop Adoption Project of the Islandwide Beautification Task Force. Taking part in this program is a marketing strategy as well as recruiting volunteers to expand their help from beautification to farming and teaching. We continue to look for various funding and opportunities to help sustain the farm and our goals. Additionally, Surahana Bernice Nelson, traditional healer and farm manager, is the recipient of the Destination Development and Management Program funding for the Cultural Heritage and Community Outreach for Guam Visitors Bureau. Sorry. The funds are specifically for the Traditional Healing Apprenticeship Program. Your funding allowed exposure of Alma Farm to the greater island community and the opportunity for Guam's apprenticeship program for Chamorro traditional healing. Hafiday, my name is Berthalyn Nirasudwe. It's for Um Almond Farm participated in the 12th Festival of the Pacific Arts and shared a traditional hut with Guam Regional Medical City in an effort to have healing arts presence present on the main festival grounds. With your funding, Amit Farm featured medicinal plants and provided informational and marketing brochures that included tour information for the farm. Handouts were also given to visitors directing them to the Guma Zawamti at the Sagan Kutura in Chamorro, where healing arts delegates from visiting countries, including Guam, were situated. Amit Farm also conducted a tour and hosted a luncheon for healing arts delegates. The Amit Farm and Hadza Foundation had daily discussions with healing arts delegates and leaders from visiting countries about establishing the Pacific Indigenous Healers Consortium to form one voice to protect, preserve, and perpetuate our indigenous healing practice throughout the Pacific. The entire group had the opportunity to present this idea to Senator Judith Wanpat that is presently being considered for funding. Almond Farm continues to participate in outreach activities throughout our island community and coordinate educational tours. Recently, Almond Farm was host to Congresswoman Madeline Verdalio and many residents of Guam. The exposure of Almond Farm attracted an AmeriCorps program from the Office of the Governor Sir Guam Commission for student volunteers. For the first time, Almond Farm was approached to manage this program rather than are seeking funding for innovative programs. My name is Belijo Oyujo. Um, I'm apprentice for Ms. Bernice Nelson. And uh, your funding has been the main source of the expansion of Alma Farm in obtaining additional plants, daily maintenance of the farm, operational expenses, stipends, marketing, and recruitment of volunteers. The breakdown for expenses for 2016 is included. Summaries of expenses from October 1st, 2015 to June 30, 2016. Utilities, 500, 568 and 69 cents. Uh, farm and office supplies, 5,160 and 91 cents. Professional fees, 1,814. 
exclusive director stipend, $4,999.96. Farm manager stipend, $12,250. Um, farm manager stipend spending, $2,750. Fourth quarter allotment release. Total expense, $27,000. $543.56. The continued funding, Almond Farm will continue to share and educate local communities, schools, and businesses about the Chamorro practices and traditional healing and cultures, culture, and the preservation of native medicinal plants throughout outreach and farm tours. Career funding raises programs and develop community partnerships continue to expand the farm, expand awareness about the organization, learn about, apply for, and manage federal grants, continue to participate in cultural affairs and festivals, develop educational materials with information on nutritional and medicinal benefit of local plants, um, create a plan to expand services, include a new group or geological area, and manage our organization effectively and efficiently. efficiently. Sustainability is an integral part of strategic and progressive work plan for Albert Farm. It requires efficient, effective, evidence-based practices, strong internal organization capacity and marketing and public relation to establish a program in, in, in indispensable in the minds of funders and other key stakeholders and strong evaluation system to show that programs are effective in reaching outcomes. Amo Farm is an asset to our island community and ongoing needs. Assessment is practiced to adapt to changing needs and conditions. We are grateful for your part opportunities you have provided Amo Farm and the Chamorro people of Guam. This is Masi. As you know, um, the tradition for uh, Amut, the Chamorro Amut is we don't charge for services and work. So it's kind of hard for us to um, sustain ourselves. Um, what I bring, uh, and that's I guess one of the reasons why Bernie invited me, was the <clears throat> marketing aspects, value added. Uh, we have been working with um, UOG, with the foot scientists, uh, one of the ones that uh, we recently, uh, or originally actually worked on was um, changing um, the starch that we have in our plants, the municipal plants, to um, to flour, you know, to make flour so that we can um, do an added value to it. Um, the other one was uh, sour sop. You know, the medicinal values of that is tremendous, and uh, we're working on that. Um, manzanita. Okay, you know that's that's a new thing now. Uh, we will be working on that. Uh, and we will t we're talking about um, hydrate, uh, dehydrating it so we can do different forms um, and, and stay away, f I mean, not div um, put a division between the traditional omelet and marketing. So we need to isolate that. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at from here forward is the, uh, how to sustain the farm. Thank you very much. No, you're very welcome, and, and I'm glad you mentioned And your aircon is very cold, man. <laughs> Aside from being nervous, <laughs> I am shaking. For, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. I appreciate it. And thank you for sharing 
the added addition into uh, as a part of your sustainability plan. I do know there is. You, have you sent your last invoice to GVB? I think so. Yes, think and the fin the financial reporting. I know that you mentioned that needs to go to GVB also. Then, and if you can submit a copy of your presentation to us, I truly uh, appreciate the comments. And to you, young ladies, thank you very much. Um, for me, uh, may, m making sure that we protect. Our, 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 our plants in that, especially those that we use for medicinal purposes and those that will make a difference in helping uh, our, our community that's ailing and, and probably can't get other uh, uh, medical uh, prescription or maybe, maybe too much for them. That this alternative and going back to the basics and going back to what our, our grandparents shared with us um, I think is really, really important, and I'm glad that you, again, brought that up. Thank you, ladies, for your presentation. And um, I, again, like I said earlier to the previous nonprofit organizations, I will continue to work really hard to at least try to sustain. If I could give more, ladies and gentlemen, believe me, I will. And, and some of you are shaking your heads saying, yes, they know me. But uh, I understand that working closely with the um, oversight chair on OFB and where our, our government finances are right, right now, he really wants to make sure that we give this. But we also need to tell the people of Guam what we're doing with the funding, how we're doing it, what needs to be expended, and what plan do you have to include uh, in the future for its sustainability. And, and um, as you give your presentation, it's important that they understand, the people understand, the community understands that that's why the funding is needed. So I really appreciate you guys taking uh, time out of your busy schedule to be here, and I will fix that air conditioned problem. I hope. That's our problem. I'm shaking. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Thank Nelson. You. And I understand that <coughs> you continue to work closely with Hata <coughs> and the efforts that we've been doing since the Festival of the Pacific Arts. So, yeah. sign them all. See. Thank you very much for having us here. Yeah. I just been so. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I now have. Um, I'll go ahead and give Haza since we did Amut Farms and there's a connection there, and then I'll go ahead and call Guam Symphony up. And I think is Guifi here. And I also I think I see is that Tossi or Tasa? Tasa. Please come on up. We'll go ahead and, and wait. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll have uh, Hatza. Buenas and half a day, uh, Madam Chair. Um, my name is Zita Pangalina, and I'm the president of Hadza Foundation. And um, we are also a nonprofit organization and all run by volunteers. Many of our volunteers are currently working, so um, we've been um, involved in many presentations. So I'm trying to limit the number of times they take off from work because they don't get paid when we're doing this type of work. But um, Hadza has been around since 2005, and I want to share this PowerPoint. It's going to give a brief summary. Um, and our mission is to enhance the, peop um, the well-being of our people. We, since 2005, we've been engaged in discussions with our people in, through conferences, workshops, uh, institutes, and looking at what are the problems or issues affecting in, in terms of protecting, perpetuating and preserving our language, culture, traditions, and values. In through those engagements and dialogues, we found that things kept evolving, and uh, one area that wasn't being addressed was traditional healing. We were constantly being asked, where do we find our Zoamtis or Surahana Surahana? This is a very short, I mean, uh, just a brief summary of our historical hi highlights. I'm going to refrain from it because I did present you with a more extensive report. Um, but one issue that has been a great concern to our people um, was the difficulty and challenges, like I said, in finding these traditional healers. So we extended our efforts um, into Rota, into the CNMI, and went uh, primarily in Rota and then into C um, uh, Saipan. But um, concurrent with all this effort, the two urgent issues that 
you know, is brought to light is that Guam and the Marianas is in a, um, has an epidemic of non-communicable diseases as is declared by the Pacific Islands Health Officers Association in 2010. But aside from the physical um, epidemic, we are also dealing with a real serious um, behavioral health issues for Micronesia and our indigenous peoples. Today, um, as quoted, we see more and more that our people are not well. They are confused, they struggle, they are strangers to the cycles of nature. They are hurt and they hurt themselves. Which brings to fight light that um, um, in terms of statistics, there are 58.9% of all deaths on Guam are attributed to NCDs. In addition, there's been a 50%, um, we ha Guam has a higher suicide rate, 50% um, higher than in the United States mainland, and more than three times higher than Asian and Pacific Islands. And so these, we look as Hadza Foundation, when we're talking about well-being, we're not just talking about the physical that aspect, but we also look at the behavioral and mental state of our people. And so the two questions that um, we have been really focusing on is how do we address the current epidemic of NCDs and the behavioral health issues? How can we promote and preserve and perpetuate our traditional healing practice that sustain our people to heal us today? And can we reestablish a community of believers today in the midst of this Western influence and colonialism? Um, and will it be able to survive the next two generations, as um, Dr. Trish Lizama has noted. So bringing together all those people, um, we brought in healers, we brought from the Marianas, public health professionals, the Manumkos, the Manhoban, and our community and sponsored the first Ahmed conference in 2012. And um, from that conference, it was um, Dr. Trisha Lizama's research that stated that it is vitally important for this knowledge to survive the centuries-long journey of colonization on Guam as well as the uber-militarization of the island since 1944 that have placed indigenous knowledge and practices at risk and um, of extinction in as few as two generations. Um, so, and the, the challenges, so we really delve into what are the specific challenges that we're dealing with today and um, uh, perpetuating it. And one is a skepticism and fear by Iman Zoamti of exploitation of our, our tradition, um, trying to make profit, um, which is something that's sacred. Difficulty with accessing medicinal plants and herbs behind the fence. The loss of medicinal plants. Um, just two weeks ago, um, our healers went out to look for Ahmed and they couldn't find Kutman ta uh, Tano. So this is really a challenge. Um, no family to pass it down. Children are not wanting to take on the tradition. Um, and then there's these conflict of values, the humility, mamala, mamala versus self-promoting or the banidosu. Um, resolutions were passed in that conference and we have focused on um, promoting or, or achieving those goals and re uh, addressing those resolutions. So the overall was to promote and perpetuate native healing systems through programming and policies in education, land use, and healthcare initiatives. Um, regarding our traditional healing, regarding our tr stewardship of our land and traditions. Um, regarding Hadza Foundation, we've been kind of like the group or the organization that people have been calling, where do we find these healers? How do we get um, um, this Ahmed and, and the stories and so forth? So um, with regards to medicinal plants, we've been conducting the um, assessment and inventory of medicinal plants. We've been um, cultivating, um, establishing GS, uh, a registry of actual plants and its uses. So we have over 250 medicinal plants in our registry. Um, we have cultivated them. Unfortunately, um, what we have found is that they do not exist or thrive 
in their non um, in their natural environments. We've also been working on rethinking education in the Pacific in terms of also educating and incorporating this into our curriculum. We've been reaching out to schools. We are preparing a curriculum for the University of Guam, um, which will be um, offered hopefully in the spring, um, next spring. Um, and we've been also developing an apprenticeship um, uh, for the Zoomtis. And we have currently nine apprentices um, four that have been with, with us for the past five years and we just recruited four additional ones that are very passionate and volunteering their time. Um, and um, also with the re resolution is to obtain support and, legislat and legislative support for these endeavors. And um, we are very, very grateful to you and um, the legislature to all for all this work that we're the support we're getting at this point in time. Um, we're also looking at the reformulation of our health care system to recognize our indigenous practice as equal to that of the Western systems. And uh, Dr. Annette David has been in, um, involved in this and shared with us the Philippines model. Um, so that we can have policies to allow the practice of traditional medicine, wherein um, a few years back, like the Naval Hospital will not allow any traditional healers to enter or provide um, services. So um, I am just going forward. This is what we've done with the funds you've given us. We have been collaborating with the university, with schools um, in terms of the gardens. Um, but we have learned from our experience that curriculum has to, the curriculum with the Department of Education has evolved now from, um, um, what is the difference, um, what is it, No Child Left Behind, it's now gone into core curriculum, and all the time that we engage into this project, we're asked, well, how do the standards align, how can we get this, and so these were the challenges and why we had to stop, pull back, and look at curriculum and helping teachers um, um, align the standards of gardens to um, the current standards. We've also done outreach to communities, and this is kind of, um, kind of blurry, but this is the type of a response we get with community garden workshops. And we've, we do a four-part series, again, lesson learned, Instead of four, we need to make it six because the, the, the participants go home for a month, they start their gardens, and then they come back and they say, well, we have problems with this, and so we develop our curriculum as we go through with these community garden workshops. And, um, and then the, the participants then learn and then bring the other problems that they um, deal with um, with their own gardens. So that's been very effective. And like I said, um, in terms of curriculum, we've had to reach out um, further and have um, sent three participants to Hawaii um, to get trained, to be uh, train the trainers um, in terms of the alignment of curriculum. Um, I'm going to skip through here. And we also um, initiated a um, summer camp, a six week summer camp focused on gardening, focused on, and with this um, is a unique angle in that um, we reached out to those with social uh, uh, co social and economic um, challenges. And so we had a lot of students or participants who weren't able to afford. Um, and so we gave um, condition of enrollment to ensure that parents participated in this workshop. So the idea is while we're teaching the, the students, parents had to attend evening classes to learn how to prepare healthy, nutritious, um, and they th truly enjoyed it. So that was the success and this was in, done with the um, Co UOG Cooperative Extension Chills Program and FNIP. Um, and we're so proud again. I. We've shared this before that uh, one of the um, resolutions was to open a traditional 
Healing Center on Guam, and we're very, very proud that on May 22nd, we opened the Gumat Zuong Tea. And today it operates um, three days a week um, with uh, three to four Zoam teas up there to service. And um, we are also um, have been charged with establishing this registry of Iman Zoam tea. And so we continue to expand on that um, and um, have been working with young men and women who choose or desire to also learn this tradition. And we've been documenting and recording and publishing, so um, we've done that too. But one of the key areas is the land and our respect to the land. And so um, the funds that you have provided and through the Tourist Attraction Fund has been focused on primarily on the plant collection. We've gone on 50 treks um, through the lands and have, like I said, collected over 250 medicinal plants. We have um, obtained plant clippings, propagation. And what's wonderful is the people um, that are very, our apprentices, are actual graduates of um, the University of Guam's agriculture classes, I mean, program. So we have graduates who then seek support and assistance from their mentors in agriculture in how to work with these clippings we to cultivate we also got a, a gps um, to help us in identifying the location and like i said this registry so this registry we hope to um, have for publication um, in another probably eight months so this is just these are just pictures of what it takes, what we do, what we go, and this, this was just last, not last Saturday, the Saturday before. So um, we try and get out um, at least, this was in uh, Hilan, Hilan, yeah, Hilan, in um, right next to uh, Tengisen, on the right side. So um, our apprentices, like I said, um, we have just increased it to nine, and they're shadowing our Manzo Amti. They're trekking the Halam Tano with our Manzo Amti. They're learning plant identification, cultivating the plants, learning the uses, assisting in Manzo Amti, um, and um, you participated in one of our outreach in the community where we actually go out and share this. So. Um, we have completed um, our third um, documentary, which is Amut Parayin and Lota. And so um, we have worked with Isinanganta, and Isinanganta funds were then supporting um, this aspect of our uh, efforts. And so um, these are the publications we have completed. One is Amat Peray Famagu'an, another is Amat Peray Famalau'an, and the last one is the first aid. The angle that we're moving into, and you're smiling because I know I'm pushing and pushing, is um, we are now moving towards sustainability, um, and we're using ecotourism and sustainable development program to develop property and plans for food as medicine program and it will also serve as our ecotourism development program um, where um, where we will we rec in in again the the most important thing that we're looking at is the health and welfare of our people the numbers of deaths the numbers of people on diabetes, uh, with diabetes, on dialysis. We now have four centers on this island. And so what is that telling us? So we're looking at decolonizing our diets. And um, I think um, with reclaiming our culture by sharing recipes, cooking techniques, and discussions of ingredients so that we can then look at a healthier community. And how do we do that? We've been going out. We've been, um, seems to be, we've just, our phones are ringing off the hook. We get all these emails requesting. So we have been presenting to employers at employer sites, um, as well as communities and to educators. Um, we, I just, um, um, we're gonna be, it, it's been really exciting. And the, um, with all this work, there's a greater awareness 
and people are really desiring to learn more about it. So this is just a simple, um, this is one of our workshops where we show the Ahmed itself and then people, this was focused on women, young uh, women who are uh, mothers or birth, uh, childbirthing age, of childbirthing age and we're teaching them the omelet, um, laboratory, things for women and for children. And so we tell them and we show them the plants. Our goal is that we will have these plants. We have had discussions with the um, Department of Agriculture and more cultivation of a lot of seedlings so that when we have these workshops, the goal is that people will walk away. And as in the past that we have learned is that these plants will be just around their yards and that will be part of their garden and we'll be then utilizing it to improve. Again, these are, now that we have Guman Zoamti, these are the types of workshops we've had. Um, and these are the flyers to our education and outreach awareness. Um, this is our last one at Ture. Um, and these are samples of our pilot program in indigenizing our diets. So we're still tweaking that because we see some areas where we need to improve the healthy products and then um, and uh, preparing um, recipes for it. And um, this is just um, in information, like I said, in terms of this is the opening of our Guma Zoamti. This was the blessing with Kosa Nicholas. This is one of our uh, Zoamtis. Mama Chai, she's 80 years old and one of the healthiest people. And when we go on these treks, this lady is ahead of us, kind of like pacing the trek. And this is um, Auntie Frances. And um, one of the results, like I said, I think um, what, that we're very, very proud of is hosting the Festival of Pacific Arts Traditional Healers, in which we had 13 countries. But more importantly, we have joined together to then establish the um, Pacific Indigenous Healers Association Consortium, rather. Um, and I just received um, an email. Um, so that is evolving, and we're really per, um, proud to be a part of that, to initiate it. And our effort is, again, to promote and preserve, perpetuate Indigenous healing arts in the Pacific, for we found a lot of similarities. We found our challenges are very similar also. And but where we saw there are resources amongst us that we can really benefit from and there are challenges that we can learn from each other to overcome. So this has been one of our greatest um, uh, uh, in, uh, achievement with FESPAC. And um, the, this is the specifics in terms of the funds that we received. We got um, East Sinangantu got fifteen thousand um, dollars. We spent five thousand five hundred and six or three thousand five hundred and sixty-eight dollars specifically for traveling between uh, Rota Tinian and Saipan and Guam, and also um, us paying for the fare for one of our indigenous healers, like uh, featured indigenous healers. We also paid for the videography writer and editor. Um, in the amount of 8,275 towards that documentary. And then for our Hadza, um, our, our account, um, out of the 15,000, we um, provide a stipend to every Zoamti who comes with us on every trek. Um, and so we spent, expended 5,000 on that. And uh, we needed to get another computer, a printer, and external drive for all our information. So we expended 1,489. Um, for internet, telephones, and cell phones, we expended 1,084. For printing of all our uh, public, I mean, our materials and um, information for workshops, 1,089. And for the plants and the cultivation of the plants and the um, the soil, the, the planters, and, and all that, it was 5,150. So that's the expense um, that we have used. You received all the funding from GBB, or you have one more invoice? One more invoice. And have you turned in that invoice? Um, no. I, it's because they usually alert us as to when that fund is, and to then submit it. Okay. 
So I'm going to ask you at this time to go ahead and submit that final invoice to GBB and then also give us a courtesy copy okay. and, and the financial reports that you have because that will suffice. Senator Tom Adda, thank you for joining us this morning. Do you have any questions or comments for Hadza? Yes, and I'm, I'm sorry that I, I came in late, but I presume that we're talking about the Amut Tautautano um, allocation? Uh, no. We're talking about Hadza. Hadza Amut Foundation. was a little bit earlier. Okay. Where Hadza. Uh, all right. At any rate, um, oh, okay, the $15,000 um, allocation. Um, it, th I think what you've presented um, certainly shows a lot, of, uh, work. Uh, a lot of work that's put in, a lot of good work, and, um, and I guess the $15,000 is just barely enough to be able to get all these things done. Um, and, but now, I guess as part of the effort, you also need some land uh, to continue the farm, and a bill has been introduced, the Huddin Amut, which will set aside 30 acres of land, 15 in Mangilo and 15 in Inaran. And so it's one thing to get the land, it's another to prepare it to actually be able to use it for what it is. Now, uh, have you guys gotten an estimate of what that might, you know, what kind of a uh, investment might be needed for that? Yes, we did, and the total investment for that project to pursue it is $212,688. But the idea is that if we start off with at least the farm manager um, at $36,000 and a community outreach fundraiser coordinator with $16,000, um, $52,000 just to get those two individuals. Um, I think that, and then um, about 8017 just for equipment rental. I think that will be the grounding, I mean, assist us to then work because we do have corporate uh, corporations that have been supporting us, have been, you know, we've been reporting to them too. They, we keep them informed as to all our progress. And so they're, you know, so they see um, that their investments go a long way. So at this point in time, yes, um, Madam Chair and Senator Ada, if we could get that, just to at least get two individuals um, fully concentrated on this, um, and then the initial equipment rental, I believe that our efforts, that investment will allow us to really grow it um, and to move forth to try and reduce any efforts in terms of government spending for sustainability. So yes. then just to get the hut in going, to get you may be in. probably be looking at, at a minimum of an additional $50,000. $60,000. $60,000. Yes, 60000 Okay, fine. Great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Ann, and I truly appreciate your efforts in, in talking about the land issue and, and the submission that Hadza gave earlier. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we're seeing and moving it uh, forward. Uh, I, I, I do want to share for the record, if I may, real fast, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, from Melvin Wampat born on, on, on behalf of Sinaganta. I'm writing on behalf of Sinaganta Youth Movement, which has been receiving appropriate funds from the legislature through the Hadza Foundation to help us run our community program. I wish to inform you that we are currently in collaboration with the Hadza Foundation in an attempt to further our reach and impact in our community. The Hadza Foundation has been involved in some really great work thus far, and we are excited to continue to aid in these efforts. I am writing to ask you for your support in ensuring that we continue to receive this funding and that our collaborations will be fruitful. Thank you for your time and energy, and I wanted to make sure that that got included into the committee report because I do know that besides what you do for the AMAT and the ZOAM team, and the cultural center and all that 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 this is a, a part that uh, has been a part of your collaboration yes. and and the efforts there to move forward so he wanted to make sure that that was notified and again thank you for your presentation you, uh, so submitting those documents to GVB we'll that yes. submitting and I do know that I see a uh, a plan there and I if we haven't received it already we've received it thank you very much they, uh, so any other questions, uh, Senator Adda, for this group? If not, see to a small seat, and thank you uh, for for you literally using the, utilizing the legislature to share the information and all the reports and all the books and all the collaboration you've done uh, to to truly preserve um, what you, the mission mandate for Hadza is. 
on two or three different arenas. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, ladies and gentlemen, we have, I want to say Guma. Guma. Thank you. And if you need to leave, you're more than welcome. Okay. Thank you. Half a day. Good morning, um, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Barnes and Senator Ada. Before I start my testimony, I'd just like to uh, make a comment that of these 20 organizations that the uh, legislature supports uh, through the Tourism Attraction Fund, they're all very great organizations whose work is very valuable in the perpetuation and the preservation of our culture. Our culture, which is what differentiates us and makes us makes our island unique in the whole business of the visitor industry. Um, I'd like to publicly acknowledge and thank all of these organizations who volunteered uh, many, many hours of their time, their talent, and their energy for the successful hosting of the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts. Um, I, I want to stress volunteered um, their time during the festival. It was a two-week event, and there's been uh, a lot of uh, positive outcomes um, as a result of the festival, and i just like to thank them, um, all of them, um, all of these organizations who are great and who participated in many ways um, during the festival. Thank you very much for that. Um, half a day, Madam Chair, Senator Tina Barnes, and members of the committee on the Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Historic Preservation. My name is Monica Okada Guzman. I am the Program Advisor for GUMA, Guam Unique Merchandise and Art. With me today is Tom Kanata, our Program Coordinator, and Ms. Rita Salisbury, our Program Assistant. Our Executive Director is currently off-island and sends his regrets that he could not attend. As well, members of the GUMA Board um, are unable to be here today, but we're here representing them in full force. We're here to present our accomplishments for fiscal year 2016 with specific information on how this year's appropriation from the TAF was instrumental in helping us to accomplish our mission. Let me begin again by thanking you and the Guam Legislature for your continued support of GUMA and the over 100 local artists and cultural producers who have benefited by our program. GUMA recognizes that there is no end to the creativity, passion, and pride of Guam's indigenous artisans. However, access to resources or business and marketing support has been a primary challenge for many of them. GUMA assists cultural artisans to develop their crafts into sustainable small businesses that can survive in a highly competitive retail environment. Our mission statement is to mentor and support aspiring local artists, cultural producers, and entrepreneurs, transforming their creativity, skills, and innovative spirit into self-sustainable businesses with marketable products of the highest quality that are uniquely Guam. The GUMA program targets three sectors of our community. The first being local artists and cultural pro producers or entrepreneurs with innovative ideas or concepts that have high potential to succeed in the retail market. The second group are cultural produ producers with exec existing products but need assistance in business development, production, packaging, marketing, and or branding. And then the final group are cultural producers with marketable products and production resources, but have little or no access to the retail markets. Through a carefully crafted application, interview, and selection process, the GUMA program identifies local cultural producers with products that have the highest potential for success. As a duly registered 501c3 not-for-profit entity, a board of directors oversees the GUMA program and our project team provides guidance and support to all our participants through a number of programs. The first being the GUMA Entrepreneurial Training Program. In partnership with the University of Guam Small Business Development Center, 
we have customized and expanded their microcredit training program into a 16-week course that features business basics, branding, marketing, finance, and product development in a classroom-style training program primarily for the creative industries. Participants learn how to develop and create and operate a successful small business through the creation of a customized business plan tailored to their products. Our second program is the incubation program. We provide grant funds to aid in business startups for selected graduates from the entrepreneurial training program. Participants must go through our Shark Tank presenting their concepts, business plans, and support needs in person to a panel of retail merchandising, finance, and legal expert. Each applicant is carefully evaluated for concept viability and successful potential. Once selected, GUMA provides assistance in the following areas. Product development chain, planning and execution, branding, marketing, and merchandising, legal guidance and business operations best practices, startup materials, equipments or supplies, trademark and copywriting, assistance in accessing retail markets and up to three years of ongoing monitoring and support. We also provide market research and surveys. We coordinate two annual events designed to allow our particip participants to test market their products. The Guam Micronesian Island Fair focuses on local market surveys and product testing, and we have an absolutely Guam trade fair, which is held at the DFST Galleria and focuses on market testing products directly with our visitors. This year, we took advantage of the festival and set up some of our participants in the Paseo for market research and sales. Additionally, we provide the infrastructure for our members to participate in other local fairs and events. We also have a GUMA consignment and retail sales assistance program. We provide assistance in marketing and sales to participants through consignment sales at our GUMA gallery at the Chamorro Village and through our GUMA website and social media. The gallery provides a venue for product sales for our incubators as well as test marketing for our graduates. GUMA also assists participants in partnering with local retailers to carry their products upon graduating from our incubator program. We also provide advocacy for obtaining small business and microcredit loans, identification of vendors, vendors and resources for equipment, supplies and materials, forensic review of products, packaging and price points, copywriting, trademarking and intellectual property rights information for products and designs. Just this year, we had 52 participants in our entrepreneurial training and mentoring program with 82% of them completing the course. Two orientations and call outs were made on December 5th and January 16th. The course ran from January 23rd to May 7th. A total of 43 participants completed with, fit, with 26 business plans. We are now preparing to incubate another five local small businesses in October and get them on their way to success. These graduates have exciting, uniquely Guam concepts and products with great potential to support a small, self-sustaining business that contributes to our local economy. In 2015, we also had two orientations that were held on December 14th and January 15th, with the training and mentoring program run, running from January 24th through May 2nd. There were 28 participants with 20 finishing the course. 17 business plans were completed. We incubated and, and supported seven small businesses that include Serena Soul, Island Icons, Local Girls, Color Me Guam, Mark Muir Mosaics, Infinite Charms, and Island Memories. The year before that, in 2014, the year of our pilot program, we conducted two orientations and a 12-week training program that started March 27th and con concluded on June 20. We started with 30 participants that year and 17 completed business plans. With the support of the legislature, we were able to open our Guma Gallery last October in the Chamorro Village, providing a space for our incubator businesses to showcase, test market their products, and learn the real-time nuts and bolts of, of entrepreneurship. 
With less than a year in operation, we are nearing our one-year anniversary at the Chamorro Village and have some activities planned to celebrate this milestone. We also provide retail advertising to assist in marketing this outlet. Additionally, each of our incubated businesses are experiencing great demand for their products, and some of their products are now making it to the shelves of other retail outlets around the island to include ABC stores and DFST Galleria. Finally, Madam Chair and Senator Ada, please know that GUMA does not charge any of our participants for its training or incubation programs or any of the services we prov provide. We exist solely on grants, appropriations, donations, and the generous support of our community. Over the last two years, we have expended approximately $600,000 in support for our local artists and cultural pr pr producers as our commitment to Guam's culture and economic growth. As such, we would like to express our deepest appreciation and offer Megai Nasidzu Usmaasi to you, Madam Chair, your committee, and the legislature for recognizing and supporting the Guam Unique Merchandise and Arts Program and its contributions to our community and our economy. Thank you. Nasidzu Usmaasi, I just want to say I do see that there is probably one more invoice that needs to be given to GVB. Right? Um, yes, and we have our, um, our liaison, um, our board member, who is working with the Guam Visitors Bureau. The invoices have been submitted, and I think we still have two uh, payments uh, or installments pending. And then the, fi the annual financial report has the been our, our, our treasurer and um, finance person are working on the final um, report, and um, uh, we'll be submitting it. I also have here Tom, Kanata, and Rita. I don't know if you want to like say to something. Say anything? Tom? I think you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I, I just want to share with, with the small funding that you receive from the Tourist Attraction Fund and knowing that you, as, as a nonprofit, you've already expended 600000 for uh, for our entrepreneurs. I, I want to say I see the successes. I recently went into the ABC stores and they're just looking at all the Guam products and then going into Chamorro Village of the Night Market every Wednesday and seeing the successes there. I want to say that, that for something that we thought was going to start out small has grown tremendously. We started with what, how many students and now we're already in the hundreds and over. it just, yeah, over a hundred and we just keep growing and growing and growing. I do know that I've personally have sent several people over and thinking that they might not get it, but yet they're in the program because it just needed a little bit of encouragement and saying, but I don't have the money. And I said, this is not about money. Yeah. If you believe in your product and you want it to sell, please just go see them. Just go. And you know, Senator, um, the, the, the training program, it started out as a 12 week program and it's uh, three hours every Saturday. What we, what we realized in the pilot program was that um, we needed to customize that microcredit training that the SBDC uh, provides. We needed to customize it for the creative industries. Um, we um, uh, invited and encouraged our artists to bring a buddy with them, their spouse, their daughter, or, or a partner with them because artists are creative people. You know, I mean, the looking at spreadsheets and looking at, you know, <laughs> QuickBooks and all of that, that just, they just want to uh, uh, develop their art. And so using the model of bringing a partner with them, whether it's their spouse, their brother, sister, their child. you know, pari, daughter, whatever, you yes. know, it, it helps them. And I think um, a perfect example is uh, Mark Muir. Mark Muir. And um, he, if, if, if you know Mark Muir, he's, he's an artist. All... Through and through, he's just an artist. Uh, but having his daughter and his wife uh, beside him, supporting him on, on doing the spreadsheets and doing the projections, doing the, the time and all of that, I mean, he's, um, he's really come a long way. He continues to do his, his mosaics, but the product development of his boxes his, uh, are, are just beautiful. Phenomenal. Uh, yeah, yes. I mean, and everybody, it was a hot item. <laughs> yes, yes, and then, you know, I, I think that's, that's, um, that's a model that works for Guam. Um, currently, um, our, our, our major funding is through a grant we uh, received from the Administrative for Native Americans. Um, we're going to, uh, we're, we're, 
working on our, our final year of this grant, but we're also working closely with the technical advisors of ANA on how we can continue to sustain the program. We're Great. also in communications with the uh, Chamber of Commerce because the Chamber of Commerce has um, been wanting to develop an entrepreneurship program. Uh, for Guam, so that's one way we uh, we uh, are in discussions with them on how to move forward in in developing that entrepreneurship program in partnership with Guma, you know, and expanding it. So you know, we are continually looking at um, sustainability uh, paths uh, that we can uh, uh, follow, so that we can continue to provide the support for our small businesses. Thank you very much for a good presentation, Senator. I just want to say that the report that you gave, uh, I think, was very good, and I think that uh, you know what you guys are doing certainly is laudable and and deserves uh, to be um, to be supported. Uh, but you said you do also get funding from other sources. Yes, we do. Okay, uh, so you're pretty aggressive in going after grants. Absolutely. Okay. Grants and uh, now, where do you get your corporate instructors sponsors. from? I'm sorry? Where do you get your instructors uh, that provides the classes, you know, on the weekends? Oh, we, uh, we're in partnership with uh, the Small Business Development Center. So um, we work with Denise Mendiola. Okay. And so she, she provides the microcredit training. And then we also have um, our trainer, um, which uh, uh, works side by side with Denise and then just does that customization for, for uh, creative people. But, but I, I, I think this is great. Uh, it provides that venue for artists who are trying to, I guess, uh, perpetuate the culture through their arts. Uh, and then also, but to be able to sustain it through uh, the business model. Uh, I, I, I think this is great. Gee, I should have sit in more of these hearings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I do also want to notice T, T Gallery is still a part of moving this program and helping yes, us yes definitely yes okay uh, uh, yeah. another another thing that we're looking forward to is um using the um the, uh, the guam museum uh the retail uh, portion as uh, part of the incubator program so that would not only will they have a venue at the chamorro village but it will uh, uh provide them uh, more access to our visitors you know and we were we're looking at um providing more customized merchandising um, for the museum retail through our GUMA incubators. I know we just got to get the museum <laughs> open. Yeah, yeah, we just got, yes, definitely. We are definitely working on that to get the resources. So yes, thank you again for your presentation. I am now going to take Guam Symphony. <laughs> thank you. Uh, half a day, Madam Chair, Senator Tina Munya Barnes and Senator Ada, and uh, members of the Committee on Municipal Affairs, Tourism, Housing, and Historic Preservation. My name is Stephen Bednarzik. I am the Music Director and Conductor for the Guam Symphony Society. And with me is Mr. John Robertson, who is the Vice President of the Board of Directors of the Symphony Society. Our President, Mr. Clifford Guzman, is currently off island and sends his regrets that he could not attend today. We are here on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Guam Symphony Society to present our accomplishments for fiscal year 2016 with specific information on how this year's appropriation from the Tourist Attraction Fund was instrumental in helping us to accomplish our mission. Let me begin by thanking you and the legislature for your continued support of the Guam Symphony Society and the over 70 community members that make up our all-volunteer Guam Symphony and Chorale. Established in 1967, the Guam Symphony Society is one of the oldest nonprofit organizations on Guam. Our mission is to entertain and educate our community through superb musicianship, promoting local talent, and aiding in the development of young artists. To accomplish this mission, our season typically runs from September through May with a variety of programs. Here are some highlights of our accomplishments from the last season. Our opening concert last October featured a concert entitled Cantani Tatotano, a presentation of traditional Chamorro music featuring the Annette and Gef Pago dancers. The event was held at the Lotte Hotel and included a gala dinner presentation and a matinee presentation. And may I add, the music 
from that uh, came from a, a series of albums that came out in the early 70s called The Music and Legends of Guam. Um, and it was something that was done by a gentleman named Jack DeMello out of Hawaii. And we even had some legends that were orchestrated, Two Lovers Point and stuff like that. And it was, it was a really wonderful concert, excellent performance. In December, we held our annual holiday seaside concert at the Joseph Flores Epal Beach Park Amphitheater. This is a very popular free family event and featured guest artists from the University of Guam with special guest Santa Claus in his caravel cart throwing out goodies for the children. Some of the highlights of our seaside concert include fantastic raffle prizes and our picnic basket competitions where families, friends, and organizations are judged on various picnic basket displays. And I must say, to see Santa Claus come out on a Carabao Park cart is very exciting every year for a lot of kids. Um, in January, we held our annual Young Artist Competition at the University of Guam Fine Arts Theater. This year, we had 26 young artists from the ages of 8 to 18 compete for first, second, and third place performing classical solo presentations of their choice. As part of our musical exchange program with our tourism source markets, our guest judges included Ms. Ah Young Yu, a pianist, and Ms. Min Kyung Laura Chung, a violist, both very accomplished classical musicians from Korea, and they were guest judges for this competition. We also had a small chamber music concert with them afterwards, and it was very nice. May I also add that outside of this competition, there's really only one other big competition, which is the one from the Tumon Bay Band Festival that they have. So we're one of the two classical competitions on the island. Uh, in February, our young artist competition winners were presented to a packed house in a special awards concert held at the Lotte Hotel. These young kids demonstrated their amazing individual talent by playing some of the most complicated recital pieces by some of the world's most famous classical composers. And this is a really wonderful special event because if you ever get a chance to go to it, uh, it's always about two weeks after the competition. The kids are still in good shape with their pieces. And all the families come out. It's a great experience. The families bring up flowers after the performances. And it's just a really wonderful thing to, to watch happen and watch this talent blossom and grow. Also in February, we were honored to welcome Dr. Jiang Kwan from the famous Seoul Orchestra as our special guest conductor for our, our spring concert featuring Antonin Dvorak's magnificent New World Symphony. That memorable concert also featured a very special classical gar guitar presentation by Guam's own Dave Duenas, accompanied by the Guam Symphony. And I just want to put in a plug for Mr. Dave Duenas. If you're ever down at the Mermaid Tavern on, on a Friday night, he plays there with some groups of Patrick Palomo. Fantastic guitarist who also plays classical and jazz music. And he, he's performed with us in the past. Uh, in March, we held our annual children's concert at the Southern High School Auditorium. Coordinated with the Department of Education, this free event is specifically designed to present the Guam Symphony to primarily elementary and middle school aged children. Musical selections include music from Broadway, the movies, and Disney, along with some traditional classical pieces. This year, we entertained nearly 1,500 students to a fun-filled morning highlighted by the students singing along with their favorite selections from Disney's Frozen and other show tunes. For many of the students, this is their first exposure to a full symphony orchestra. And it's something when I was a kid I remember getting to do, and it's nice because we do sh two 45-minute performances on a, on a Thursday. And, you know, Southern High holds about 1,100 in the auditorium, and we're able to fill nine to, 900 to 1,000 for each performance. It's really wonderful. It's an exciting experience for them. Um, our final concert from Beethoven to Broadway was presented at the Fine Arts Theater at the University of Guam to a full house. Normally held in May, our finale was presented in April in deference to the Festival of the Pacific Arts. This classical and pops concert included selections from some of Beethoven's more well-known compositions, including his Fifth Symphony, as well as some of the most beloved Broadway and show tunes from Cats to Le Miserable. Each year, the Guam Symphony Society strives to present a season of varied musical styles designed to appeal to all music lovers from all ages, while providing opportunities for young musicians to expand their repertoires and musical excellence. Unfortunately, the cost of these presentations continue to rise. Venue, logistics, and advertising expenses in the face of increased competition from community contributions and donations. As such, the pass-through appropriations afforded to us by this body are very, very welcome and very much appreciated. These funds help offset the cost of our free community events, specifically our holiday seaside concert, our young artist competition, and our children's concert.
In addition, it helps support some of our operational costs for rehearsal and space rentals, musical scores, music licensing, and professional membership fees, telephone, internet, and website costs, as well as marketing and promotion expenses. A listing of these typical expenses is submitted as an attachment to this written testimony. As the only symphony in this region for over 49 years, we are proud of our accomplishments and our all-volunteer community musicians and chorale members. With the assistance of the legislative appropriations and CAHA grants, we have been able to maintain our programming and expand opportunities for our local musicians and music students of all ages within our community. This next year will mark our 50th anniversary, and we are in the planning stages for what promises to be a very robust and exciting lineup of concerts and musical events. This will include a very special for the first time ever, collaborative concert featuring other nonprofit arts organizations within the community. So we're hoping to throw a big joint concert with some other groups uh, to kick off things. In closing, we would like to express our deepest appreciation and offer un danclo nasils masse to you, Madam Chair, and your committee and the legislature for recognizing and supporting the Guam Symphony and its contributions to our community. Well, I thank you for that, and uh, I've certainly had the, the fortune of being able to listen to some of your uh, performances, and I, th I thought that they were great. Uh, but with all those things that you've done, mm -hmm. uh, you obviously did not do it just on uh, 25000 Oh, no, not at all. Okay, so you do have funding, other funding sources also? Yes, we do. We do aggressive fundraising. We go after some grants. Also, we have uh, members that help support the, the Symphony Society. Okay, excellent, great. Yeah, it's a, a small portion of the entire budget, but it helps tremendously because every every penny counts. I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator. I, I just want to say for the record, uh, when we first started to assist in helping the Guam Symphony, it was through the efforts of the Chamorro pieces that you were mm -hmm. able to to share with not just with the older musicians but with the younger group. I do also want to quote at the I think it was at the Lote Hotel when I was there, and I if I'm not mistaken there was four generations of family members there supporting their kids and their grandchildren. So you know, yeah. grandparents, and all the way down to a young young Guamanian family that was there, and they were saying. And I'm very appreciative of the legislature supporting that, even if it's just a little. And they said that this elderly uh, person said it would, the money that you provided, the legislature provided, goes a long way to help in the generation. So mm -hmm. I needed you to know that coming no, because um, um, it was just through conversation and the assistance to help the Guam Symphony. Um, uh, it was asked from a member, not from from the organizers, from the coordinators, but from a family member saying, is there any way? Yeah. And look at the pieces that they've been able to present and, 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 and continue to share with the younger generation, but not just because it's classical or yeah. jazz or whatever, but tomorrow yeah. and, and the excitement there. So I just want to thank, you probably know who the family is, but I just want to say that they, they came out to, to really show the appreciation and please don't stop what you're doing because those free concerts really, really bring families together. And we both have had that opportunity to go to them. Sometimes we can't stay through the whole yeah. event, but for the most part, that has really made a difference. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Again, we will try our very best to sustain what it's here. And, and if we had any more, then we can always revisit it to give to giving more resources. Thank you very much, Senator. But thank you both for being here. Thank you, Mr. Sure. I know, I think you've... <laughs> Back in an earlier age, I did play uh, viola in the Asheville, North Carolina Symphony Orchestra, also a community orchestra such as this one. And uh, more recently, I, I was singing in the chorale here locally. Um, having some difficulty with uh, a cough. When I start singing, I cough. <laughs> so I had to stop that. But I want to add to what uh, Steve said, uh, Madam Chair and Senator Ada, appreciate very much the contribution that you made to the uh, symphony. It's very much appreciated. It doesn't doesn't do everything that we have to do, but 
we have a very aggressive uh, board of directors, about 16 people. Uh, we are very fortunate to have Steve Bednarsik as our uh, director and conductor. And starting in January, we also added a, a person, a executive director, to take care of the business side of things. This was very much needed, and uh, we're not paying either of those very much, but it, it's a, it makes a very good combination to take care of the music side as well as the business side. Thank you very much. No, thank you. It's greatly needed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Senator Orsini, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you very much for having all of us here, um, not-for-profit organizations. I like to say, uh, I think it's uh, good morning. It feels like it's already afternoon, but uh, good morning, um, Senator Ada and uh, Madam Chair, Senator Tina Munya Barnes, um, for having uh, Guafi here. My name is Sonny Orsini. I'm uh, president of Guafi. As a business owner, pitmaster, as a father, and as a son of Guam, I believe that our greatest strengths come from our cultural tradition of bringing together extended family, of sharing in the cooking and eating of food and of what we grow on our land, and of our respect for the ones who have gone before us, an abiding spiritual connection. Without these core ideals, our people would not have survived the tragedy of near genocide at the hands of the Spanish, nor would we have thrived as well as we have after the devastation of World War II. Aware of this legacy and of these ideals, Guafi has embarked on a new endeavor to more deeply root these ideas into a new generation of chefs, students, and young people, while at the same time firing up the memory and imaginative resources of our Manamco. We will do this by developing programs of action that develop our knowledge and proficiency in the art of traditional wood-fired preservation and cooking methods. Our programs of action will be allied by partnerships and deep dialogue with cultural thinkers, practitioners, activists, ethno ethnographers, artists, anthropologists, and the land itself. Our vision for this project is to perpetuate our long tradition of being connected to the land and to the ranch by creating the awareness and appreciation among the people of Guam regarding the special attributes of our wood-fired cookery traditions. In, a, in return, the project will help our island by maintaining a defining part of our rich culture and ensuring that it is transmitted to the next generation. Our goal is to prepare, is to be prepared to showcase several methods of traditional Chamorro wood-fired cooking. To embrace the extraordinary opportunity presented by this project, we are also making plans for an international event titled the Guam International Wood-Fired Cooking Festival. Our intention is to see this grow into an annual event over the next decade. The objective is to showcase Guam as a premier wood-fired and barbecue and culinary travel destination, far beyond just our sun, sand, and surf. In 2015, we were able to accompany the members of the Micronesian Chefs Association to become certified KCBS or Kansas City Barbecue society judges in wood-fired cooking. In addition, we've trained with award-winning chefs and pit masters in the art of low and slow smoking and original American cuisine. These certifications and judging skills are now used at Guam's largest wood-fired barbecue event, the Pleasure Island Guam Barbecue Block Party hosted by GVB and supported by you, Madam Chair. We're thankful. In 2016, we have partnered with a well-known uh, vendor, Quality Distributors, to develop a Chamorro wood-fired cooking event that will be held in October of this year. 
Our aim, Madam Chair, is to help to focus on the use of a lot of the, the local resources by eliminating our carbon footprint. Um, so we're going to the the events would be fueled uh, none other than our locally harvested uh, woods such as agao, tangantangan, uh, kamachili. Believe it or not, people don't uh, realize it's a great smoking um, wood, and also mango. Um, in addition to that, we also support the the use of local inputs. Uh, such as the the ones that is um, made by both the St. Nicholas um, and the Napati family down south at Gepagu, and that's the the asiga, the local um, lo locally harvested asiga from Inaran uh, Bay, and to and so um, we'd like to uh, cultivate and promote Guam as a culinary food uh, tourism destination. Uh, as you're probably aware, um, we the the whole barbecue uh, competition events uh, held in Tumon Bay has drawn anywhere between six to eight. They are saying maybe more thousand just this just this past July alone. Yes, and so it's a huge draw. And uh, uh, according to the individuals, the people who um, that became the brainchild uh, of, uh, we like to kind of refocus Guam more than just being a sun, sand, and surf, but also to make Guam uh, the barbecue capital, uh, you know, of the region, if not the world uh, over. And we in Guam, we, we know that we have uh, the best barbecue, but by standardizing and getting our certification uh, through the Kansas City Barbecue Society, which is the largest uh, and premier um, certifying barbecue organization, um, it has helped to uh, standardize something that is very subjective and gives us a lot more credence um, in the long run and has helped to uh, bring a level of parity and equity in something that's very subjective, like tasting food uh, and that has definitely helped as we've seen just this year alone after our certification um, late last year of um, October 2015. Um, when I look over the the um, allotment process you were able to receive the full appropriation from TAF am I saying that right? Uh, I think we have about an installment or two um, okay. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So if you can make sure that you turn in your last invoice and also the final, the financial reporting for the year. Yes. If, has that been submitted? No, not yet. And we are uh, we are working um, with our uh, accounting and financial person uh, with that. But that should be submitted before within the next week or so. Oh yes, please. absolutely. And then the sustainability plan for the future as you continue to incorporate the, the, the vision to have this, the barbecue capital uh, of this side of the region, I think that it's important that we have that plan laid out so that we can be able to help advocate that moving forward. Absolutely. So I'm gonna ask that you go ahead and submit that one too. Yes, okay. uh, and in addition to that, we'll, we also have um, uh, laid out uh, uh, just shortly down the road, um, means of actually fundraising to uh, help. So we've already been talking with um, several key um, businesses that whose business are focused on on food uh, and also, uh, you know, advertising, marketing. So uh, it will be very um, effective down the road to partner with these um, local businesses um, that support the vision and the goal of doing just that. And I, and I do know uh, the opportunity uh, for Guayfi to help the winners of that barbecue contest to go off island. Am I is is that correct? Yes, that is that is the the goal. And the the goal is um, we've connected with uh, the international arm of the Kansas City Barbecue Society. And um, what what we've done is uh, now become a member of that organization, Senator. And so. By doing that, um, 
I, within this year or next year, I believe it's going to be probably more than likely next year, um, Guam will be uh, sending a team off uh, to actually compete under okay. the KCBS uh, rules and regulations. Because I know we used to do exhi exhibitions before, right? Correct. And they're going to open that slot for Guam? They will, exactly. And that's what the, the certification uh, was for, as well as uh, also the training, uh, which is slightly different than the way we would do Tino, you know, the way we smoke. Um, but Guafi would like to stick to the the ancient traditions of using wood and uh, also what we like to do is um, we are right now partnering with members of the community who are culturalists as well who are very familiar with the art and craft of cooking before um, the Spanish period uh, regarding uh, the use of chahan and then we're also exploring the the various ways in which um, the Chamorros have evolved using the hutnu um, and then, you know, um, using what was available then during that time period. So that's something we'd like to definitely contribute to um, Guampedia, which has a very scant amount of information um, to its readership and uh, also as um, a, a depository of information for the, for the future. So that's something we'd like to contribute, and we have individuals who are currently looking into um, growing that inventory of knowledge um, okay. that we don't already have. Senator Tom. Okay. With that being said, Senator Orsini, thank you so very much for taking your time to do the presentation on behalf of Guafi and just making sure that those, uh, those invoices and that final financial report is reported because uh, I think the, the uh, committee and OOP will make sure that they will look over those, those um, fi financial reports as a part of the uh, law legislation that's been yes. passed. Yes, we'll, we'll have that for you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for you. your support, um, Madam Chair, for everything regarding the Chamorro Block Party, which was a smashing success. Uh, your support for Guafi, uh, we do look uh, forward to your continued support from members of your, your body and the entire Guam legislature. Well, I, think, I believe, uh, Senator, that Guam has the best cooks and, and best culinary program. And I'm a little bit biased, but, but Without that's, a a fair statement. And that's a fair statement to say because uh, when we continue to advocate for our, our chefs and our cooks out there and our best barbecues, I think we're the best. I think we're the best. Absolutely. Not just in this part of the uh, re Pacific region, but all around. <laughs> Absolutely. The, ho the holy, they call it the holy trinity as senator and something that you know, back uh, when we were we were there in um, October last year, a lot of them use you know the, they call it the dry rub, and and so with us you know here in Guam we've kind of evolved through the use of uh, the Holy Trinity you know the soy sauce, vinegar, and of course the onions. Everyone has their own version of it, but uh, it's probably the most um, uh, umami um, flavors that uh, most of those folks back in the States uh, have never tried. And that's why they're typically wild whenever they, they try um, our, our handiwork, mix. our handiwork out of a, out of a grill. But thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, Senator Ada, Duncan and Suzu Masi. We do okay. have uh, one more nonprofit that's here, and I'm gonna call them up at this time, and it's TASA. Uh, yes, come on up. I will note for the record that uh, tradition, um, um, Seafaring Islands Tasi is not here. Mr. Guam is not here. Uh, Azuda Foundation did an earlier report, but they were supposed to continue. And Duke Duke Goose. Uh, I will, um, for the record, uh, recess this meeting, uh, this informational hearing, to give them the opportunity to reschedule and reset. We may have received information on a couple of them who could not make it in this morning uh, beyond their control. Uh, even if the five-day notice was given. But uh, I want to say thank you for taking the time to be very patient and be here. So I give you the floor now. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for um, continuing the efforts and perpetuating the passion of Senator Late Ben Pangolini. Ben Pangolini. Um, we all know what he his involvement in traditional seafaring was, and, and we are uh, nothing but glad to, to um, push that along as well. Um, I'd like to thank you, Senator Ada, for being here also. 
um, I'd like to introduce to you. Well, first, let me let me uh, tell you the mission of TASA. You want to go ahead and introduce yeah. your name? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Jose <laughs> Martinez. To my okay. right over here is Donna Mila Titano and our mentor, Antonio Pialog. Um, I, we are from traditions affirming our seafaring ancestry. We are a group dedicated to perpetuating um, and strengthening the Chamorro identity through the revival and practice of our seafaring traditions. I just read our mission statement. We have Chamorro identity in our mission statement, but because we have a tradition that's been lost and was pretty much taken from us uh, hundreds of years ago, we are seeking out our, our um, Pacific brothers in the Carolinians to help us out, and that's why we have Antonio Pialik here. Um, if you are unaware, and I know you've met uh, Mr. Pialik previously before, um, Senator, he is a son of Mao Pialik, Papa Mao Pialik, who was instrumental in, in reviving the Hawaiian spirit of tradition or traditional navigation in, in, the, in the, the, the Eastern Pacific. Um, we were very fortunate to hear of his um, presence in Saipan. Um, he's been a, a resident of Saipan for a long time, and we had reached out to him and, and offered um, and presented ourselves to him, and he had, had in turn offered his help and assistance in, in, in helping us build and learn traditional navigation. That being said, um, Antonio returned back to the island. I think we approached him in 2011, and uh, he returned back to the island here on Guam in 2015, the summer of 2015. And, and, and the main focus mission was to complete a SACMAN, or the largest seafaring, Chamorro seafaring vessel um, that, that we have. Um, throughout 2015, the end of 2015, all the way up to April, we had completed that canoe, um, Sakma and Finaguadze in Guahan, um, and I think you're at the blessing ceremony for that in, in late April. Yeah, very, very awesome, very incredible. Um, this canoe, although it was directed by uh, Antonio Pialik, um, using his methodology of building canoes in Carolinian Islands, he did use a Chamorro design um, and a lot of features as far as the the, the, the symmetry of the hull and, and other um, and other specific features of a Chamorro canoe that we have been able to glean from from past uh, past history. So, with that being said, I, I I wanted to also meld how the partnership of our other Pacific brothers have helped us to restore and revive this 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 uh, practice. Um, which is all but lost because you're aware there is uh, the the, pre the the existence of Tasi, which preceded us in Tasa. Um, there is um, a school down south, the Guam Southern Christian Academy, who has a program in traditional seafaring, and Robert Limtiaco, Rob Limtiaco helps them, and um, we also now have Ulitao, which is based out of Tumon and is now down in um, in Talafofo. Yes. The, the uh, yeah, Valley of the Laddie, brand new uh, place there. Um, a lot of the work that we've been doing the past, in, since fiscal year 2015 into 2016 was to complete this, this canoe. The, the completion of the canoe was also, I think, a catalyst for these other groups to, to look at what they were doing and also um, to, to help reignite some things. Or, to reignite some of uh, what they've been doing or they put on pause, for instance. Um, when Fenegazu was completed, we had, we had participated in a project with the Guam Museum to do a film for them. And so we, our maiden voyage of this, the Sackman was to go down to Seti Bay. And because this project um, required several other canoes, we were able to get Saina in the water and Quest in the water. Sina is a canoe that um, Tasi had been in possession in, and if you remember back in 2009 was the first Chamorro Sackman canoe to voyage in over 300 years, which I was a part of that crew on that maiden voyage. Quest was a canoe that they had purchased from the, from the island of Puluat to help practice. Both of those canoes have been on land and haven't been back in the water since then, but again, with the uh, c completion of Finaguadzic and being put into water, I think it was very important. Um, for them to put in the water to and, and, and accompany us on this project. Um, of course, you know that fest pack occurred, <laughs> and it didn't just occur in those two weeks. There was plenty of planning. Um, fiscal year 2016 also 
the comp uh, was about planning that. And I know the monies from TAF weren't a part of that planning, but it was a part of our activity also. And um, I think um, with that being said, I'm looking to, to the next couple of years, actually the next five years or so, we had, we had a, um, excuse me, my words always escape me. I, I, I say, I, I think a lot of things. I think the, the um, uh, right now I'm thinking about the, the opening ceremony of Festback. I don't know if you guys were there for the traditional opening ceremony. It definitely was there, it was amazing. It was amazing, it was incredible. Yes. Um, I don't think we were expecting the crowds that were there. Um, the opening ceremony consisted of all the canoes that came from the other islands, including the canoes of Guam. And I think this is the first time we've seen that many canoes from mm -hmm. Guam in the water at the same time coming in together. I believe it was almost 15, over 15 canoes. Um, one, two, three, like five of them were from Guam. Yes. Um, and we have a few more that we didn't bring into the opening ceremony. From that point on, I, we were getting a lot of visitors down to where we're at, visiting the, the voyagers that stayed down at Paseo, a lot of interest. Um, the momentum from that um, is still ongoing. We have a lot of people that are coming to us and asking us what's next. And what's next for us is, is to continue training on Finnegansen, to develop a school for the youth and also an apprenticeship program. We are also partnered up with Sagan Couture Chamorro up there at um, the old hospital residence area. Um, we have acquired one of their houses from them. Um, the, one of the requirements for, for our existence of their occupation up there is to have an apprenticeship program. Uh, we do work with other seafaring um, um, organizations also, because that house is theirs also, but we're the ones that maintain okay. uh, that house up there. Um, right now, I think there's a teacher who's, who's carving a canoe, uh, Mr. Raleigh Cruz, who is from down south, from Southern High, and he has a, a mini apprenticeship program this summer until school starts, which is in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, um, let me see here. One of the things I want to emphasize is that, <clears throat> is to go back to Antonio Bialik. If you do know the history of his father and of, of, of how he helped the Hawaiians, you also know that, that his knowledge was passed down to his sons. He does have a son in Palau named Cesaro. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounce his last name, Soilar? Soilur who is at the, a school, the University of Palau down there teaching navigation to the Palauans. Um, we have Antonio Pialik here helping us and teaching us. Um, we, we haven't submitted our, our, our yearly budget yet, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, yearly report, and I think that's almost finished. I'm not the treasurer, but I'll, I'll work with the treasurer um, in the next couple of days. Um, have you received all the invoices still? We, we believe we have one more left, if not right. two. We're not sure how they're going to break it in, and I think okay. it might be the final. So as long as you submit that to them and then give us a copy, and then for the yearly financial report for 2016, mm -hmm. that needs to be also submitted because that's a law requirement. Sure. Okay. 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 Um, and that's pretty much it. If there's any questions, the... Senator Adam, do you have any questions for that? I, I just want to say that it's it's really important. Um, I was at that event for the Festival of the Pacific Arts. I think um, everybody talked about how amazing it was and an opportunity that won't be here for probably 108 years for the next Festival of the Pacific Arts to be around this area or this part of the Pacific. But I want to say that it was the intriguement of not just uh, those that were in attendance, but a lot of the children and a lot of the teenagers that were there and wanted to learn. I think there's been a re-synergy of that, and maybe that's why you have four, four if not five, including the one off island right. uh, groups who want to come together to learn the navigation, to learn the, the how to build the 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 canoes, and 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 then learn about the history. Um, what you've done was to get the expertise from our island brothers, and I think that's also very critical because we, we've lost, like you said, we've lost a lot of that. Uh, it's important, as I, I know that you're probably one of the, the few organizations that have been um, uh, funded and the resources that have come from the TAF for more than, at least for more than five years. And uh, yes. even with, with Speaker Ben, because he felt that this should continue. 
I think what's important to say that as you talked about the training and the apprenticeship program, what's happening up at Sagan Couture, and I think that that needs to continue to be highlighted and be part of your sustainability plan uh, as you present it to our office and to GVB. I think it's important that we include that uh, as a part of the mandated curriculum because what you see here need today to are, are are volunteers only except for right. except for Antonio Pialik and it it just goes to show that our, our passion there is 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 strong like I'm Good. I'm taking time off from work right now to to come <laughs> down here you. right and uh, and so I just want to express that an apprenticeship program encompasses a lot more commitment also. So we're working on a sustainability program. We also have other funding sources. We just um, acquired a major um, uh, corporate sponsor um, right before FESPAC, which has been a help for us. So we have a lot of our in-kind uh, equipment as far as chainsaws and things yes. like that who be able to service and also to acquire. Um, I'm not sure if I'm able to say the name, but... Um, it's okay. It's it's yes. uh, Guam Home Center yes. in Dedido, and they have been instrumental in providing us with a lot of things. And I think our partnership is going to go a long way. Good. Also, as you continue to look for for other uh, networks out there to help uh, sustain the program that you have today, and again, it was it, like I said to you and to all the other nonprofit organizations, it was important that you present your testimony today, so that the people of Guam can know what the mission mandate is of that of your nonprofit organization and how you've been able to integrate it with the community how you work that but more importantly is to perpetuate mm -hmm. the program and to teach uh, the younger generation how to build so that we don't lose it and uh, we also want to extend our thank yous to our Micronesian uh, Pacific brothers who come and help us want to make a difference did you want to say anything or are you okay Okay, thank you very much. So again, thank you very much, Mr. Martinez, Chairman. thank you very much for being here. La, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I did say that um, uh, we still have uh, several uh, nonprofit organizations who could not make it today. It's almost, it's five minutes to lunch. We, three minutes to, to 12 uh, uh, noon, and I want to say that I'm just going to call this informational hearing to a recess so that we can uh, ascertain the the four other uh, uh, nonprofits who could not make it today to see if they can have the opportunity to do that. So it is 1257, and uh, thank you very much for being here. Sainamasi. Thank you, Senator Ada, Senator Tom Ada.